where we'll be bringing you live coverage today of the 60, 265th spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. We're currently in a LOS or a small brief period between our satellites. We'll have imagery back inside the International Space Station for you. Um, today we'll be seeing two NASA astronauts, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen, who will exit the station's Quest airlock to install an upgraded IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array on the 1B power channel today. And that is on the starboard truss of the station. The new ISS solar array or IROSA will increase the space station's total available power. Houston airlock on one for step 11. We have the recorded GMT 1130. 11 1130. Copy 1130. Today's spacewalk will see the sixth IROSA mounted to the existing station solar arrays. The fifth array installed just last week on June 9th by the same duo. The new solar arrays are 60 feet long by 20 feet wide and will shade a little more than half of the original arrays, which are 112 feet by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity and once all are installed, will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays. Prior to the start of today's coverage, we did hear that the crew is running about 10 minutes ahead of their schedule. And now you're looking live into the equipment part of the Quest airlock of the International Space Station, where you see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and UAE, or the United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Anayati, helping out the duo get suited up today. You see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He's suited up in the suit with the red stripes. And there he is on the left of your screen, on the center of your screen. And Steve Bowen, he's on the right or the lower portion of your screen, and he is in this unmarked suit. And again, they are preparing right now for their exit of that Quest airlock a little later this morning. Houston airlock for the Medox SU uh, numbers, we've got uh, 20 and 22. Be copy, good numbers. This spacewalk will be the second spacewalk of Hoberg's career, completing his first just a week ago, and this will be the tenth for Bowen. This will tie Bowen with Mike Lopez Alegria, Bob Bankin, Peggy Whitson, and Chris Cassidy for most spacewalks by a U.S. astronaut. Bowen has accumulated 60 hours and 22 minutes of spacewalking time in his previous nine EVAs. This is this is going to be the sixth spacewalk for Expedition 69 and the eighth spacewalk of 2023. And airlock step 21 uh, is 1134. One, we copy 1134.
And again, you're looking live inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. The duo are suited up and going through some final procedures before they head out the hatch later this morning. Also in the airlock assisting is NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and UAE astronaut Soten Anayati. During today's spacewalk, Coburg and Bowen will focus on the installation of the IROSA on the six, the S6 truss for the 1B power channel, whose array has some degraded power strings. This will complete the third pair of IROSAs for the station. Houston airlock, uh, good lift check on both EMUs. Houston copies, good lift check. The spacewalking duo arrived to the station, a part of the Crew-6 mission, NASA SpaceX Crew-6 mission, on, and they arrived to the station after a launch from the, from Kennedy Space Flight Center, Space Center in Florida. They launched from Complex 39A, and they arrived to the Orbiting Laboratory two days later. On, they launched on March 2nd and arrived to the station two days later. And it, along with those duo will also be on station is Expedition 69. Also includes astronaut Frank Rubio from your left. Ross Cosmos cosmonaut. Dimitri Patelin, UAE or United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Adiyati. You see your spacewalking duo there in the center. That's Woody Hoberg. And to the right is going to be Stephen Bowen. And beside him, it's going to be Dimitri Patelin of Roscosmos. And to the right of him, it's going to be the commander of the station currently. That's Sergei Prokopiev. You currently see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and Sultan Anayati of the United Arab Emirates currently working on a SAFER. The SAFER is that portion of the spacesuit that is going to be just in case in the unlikelihood that the crew member is separated from the International Space Station. That SAFER is going to give them just enough propulsion to get back to the station. And again, we did say the duo is ahead of their normal schedule. We currently see um, the suit-up leads helping out 
Stephen Bowen get his safer attached. That safer or that's implied aid for EVA rescue. Again, that's essentially that jet pack that astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. And again, this is just a precautionary measure in the unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station. That safer would allow the crew member to safely propel themselves back to station. Again, once the safers are successfully installed on the astronauts, they will be moved through the equipment lock portion of the airlock you see on the top of your screen. And they will go into that next session, the, the crew lock portion of that Quest airlock. The hatch will then be closed behind them and final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch. Again, now you see Sultana Anagiati and Frank Rubio working together to install the safer on Woody Hoberg's suit. Again, you can tell the difference between the two spacewalkers by their stripes. Woody Hoberg has the suit with the red stripe or the EV-1 extravehicular crew member one. And then you see Stephen Bowen to the left and he has a suit with no stripes. And he is designated EV-2 or v extravehicular crew member two. The spacesuits you see the duo wearing now are EMUs or extravehicular mobility units, which are essentially a mini life support system providing environmental protection, mobility, and communications for the crew members during their spacewalk today. If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the 8th Spacewalk of 2023 and the 265th Spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. So far this morning, NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen have completed pre-breathe and they are currently getting their safers installed. Once safers are successfully installed, we'll see those to go into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock.
And there we go. We currently see Sultan Anayati and Frank Rubio helping Woody Hoberg into the crew lock portion of that Quest airlock. And now we see them begin to put the safer on Stephen Bowen. Again, the safer or the simplified aid for EVA rescue is essentially a jetpack that the astronauts wear when they perform spacewalks. The safer is worn as a precautionary measure in the unlikely event that an astronaut were to become untethered from the space station, they can uh, use the safer and it would allow them to safely propel themselves back to the space station. Again, once the safers are successfully installed, you'll see both of the crew members moved into that crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. And then the hatch will be closed behind them. The final preparations will begin to depressurize the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. They'll then complete suit checks and communication checks with the flight control team here in Houston before venturing outside the hatch this morning.
Again, if you're just joining us, we are bringing you live coverage today of the 8th Spacewalk out of the ISS this year and the 265th Spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. So far, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen have completed pre-brief. They've had their safers installed. We have Woody already in the crew lock portion, and we see them finishing up here installation for the safer on Stephen Bowen. Once Stephen has his safer successfully installed, we'll see the duo Frank Rubio, NASA astronaut, and UAE astronaut Sultan Adiyati move Stephen Bowen over into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Once both spacewalkers are over in the crew lock portion, we'll see that hatch between them closed and we'll begin procedures for depressurization. And now with his safer successfully installed, we see Stephen Boeing being led into that crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Again, once both crew members are in a good configuration inside the crew lock portion, we'll see Sultan Anayati, UAE astronaut, and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio move back, and we'll see them close that hatch. From there, we'll be looking at the depressurization process beginning.
If you're just joining us, we're bringing you live coverage today of the 8th spacewalk of the ISS out of the ISS this year and the 265th spacewalk in support of International Space Station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. So far, NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bone have completed pre-brief. They had their safers installed, and they are inside the crew lock portion of that Quest airlock. <laughs> Today's spacewalk will be Woody Hoberg's second and Stephen Bowen's tenth spacewalk. Hoberg is EV-1 or extra vehicle crew member one. He's wearing the suit with the red stripes. You will see his helmet cam once he exits the hatch today. He will be helmet cam number 22. Boeing is designated as EV-2 or extra vehicle crew member number two. And he has the suit with no stripes, and he will have helmet cam number 20 today. And right now, you see Frank Rubio, who is looking like he is closing the hatch right now between the crew lock and the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. All right, again, you're seeing the hatch closure. This is isolating Hoberg and Boeing in the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Once the crew gets the go from the team in Houston, depressurization of the crew lock will begin. Depressurization will take the crew lock from its current 14.7 PSI all the way down to vacuum. Final suit checks and comm checks will occur, and then the crew will be giving the go to place their suits on internal battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. Houston airlock uh, step 76 and 77 uh, completed. Yeah, copy that, Sultan. Good morning. And uh, Houston's working on 78, 79, and 80. We'll let you know when they're complete. Good morning, Nick. Uh, copy regarding 78 through 80. He was talking with him. Station Houston, you are now hot mic. Step 80 is complete. Uh, we're still working on 78 and 79. Copy. Good morning, Nick. Two copies. That station call. And you just heard a call from United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Adiyati and the response from Nick Hague, uh, NASA astronaut Nick Hague, who's Capcom or the capsule communicator, communicating all the way through just pressurization this morning, at which point the ground IV, Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jenny Gibbons, will take over communications, walking the crew through today's spacewalk. Gibbons was selected by the Canadian Space Agency as one of the two members of the 2017 CSA group alongside Joshua Kutrick. And in the room, you'll hear, you'll see Brandon Lloyd, flight director, who will be leading the charge today. And we have lead spacewalk officer Megan Shutika and Miranda Nelson also helping out with today's EVA. You won't hear them, but they'll be working behind the scenes, helping everything run smoothly. 
Wilson. I want to let you know we're done with step 78, 79. You're go to press in step 81, and when you get to step 84, you are go. We are go for step uh, 81, and in step 84, we are go for the key point. That's good read back. I see that this is step for you, just checking the deepest bomb power is off. First bomb power is off. Five deepest bomb enabled AD is on. Enable LED is on. Okay, so we've got the go to perform the uh, deep press uh, cue card and uh, we'll give you the commands uh, once ready. Okay, ready. And you just heard Sultan Adiyati confirm that they had the go for deep press. Right, Steve, uh, on the UIA switch, deep press pump power on. Deep press pump power is on. 10 seconds for completion of startup. Yeah, that should be 10 seconds. I'll take the deepest pump manual isolation valve to open. Expect an alert on. First pump manual isolation valve is open. What do you during this time? Monitor uh, switch pressure gauge is always less than 5.5. At this time, depressurization will occur in a two-stage fashion. The crew lock will be taken down to about 5.5 pounds per square inch of pressure, and at which point they'll pause in dep depressurization to do a system check. Then depressurization will resume to get the crew lock all the way down to vacuum. Once it gets down to vacuum, Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen will conduct suit checks and communication checks with Mission Control at Houston before they put their suits on internal ba battery power. Again, that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. And again, we're in a brief handover period between satellites, but we're back inside the International Space Station flight control room. where the Orbit 2 team is ready to support today's spacewalk under the direction of Flight Director Brandon Lloyd. To his right at the Capcom, Capcom console is Ground IV Jenny Gibbons, who serves as spacewalk communicator, who will talk directly with the crew during the spacewalk, helping them to choreograph timelines and procedures. And to her right is Capcom or Capsule Communicator, NASA astronaut Nick Haig. And again, you'll hear him communicating with the crew up until the point of depressurization this morning, at which point the ground IV will take over communicating with the spacewalking duo. Just a reminder, Woody and Steve, uh, when the crew lock at 6 PSI, expect an alert on. Copy. Copy.
And the crew airlock just got just past, just under 9 PSI. Again, we are looking for a pause at around 5.5 .5 PSI for some system checks. Again, following this depressurization, we'll see the crew do calm and system checks with the ground here in Houston. Then they'll switch over to internal battery power, starting the official start of today's spacewalk. A U.S. spacewalk start and end time is measured from the time the crew places their spacesuit on internal battery power all the way to up until the repressurization occurs and they're back inside the crew lock following completion of their spacewalking task for the day. Again, we're just about five minutes until we hit that five pounds per square inch of pressure. Once five PSI is reached, depressurization will be paused so that system checks can take place. They'll then resume depressurization to get the airlock down to vacuum. Again, we're coming up on six pounds per square inch. And we're looking for that pause around five pounds for system checks. Rubio and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and UAE astronaut Sultan Adiyadi still inside the equipment section continuing to monitor depressurization on the Quest airlock where NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Boeing are suited up and undergoing preparations to venture outside of the space station's hatch for today's spacewalk. After about five PSI is reached and system checks are performed, depress will continue until vacuum is reached.
Chris Steve, uh, first pop manual, is this involved? Go to close, please. Hey, first pop manual, is this involved? It's closed. Send alert from. On the DCM, switch display status until leak check, question mark displayed, and then switch display yes, hold for two seconds, and follow the uh, display instructions. And the crew lock is now down to 5 PSI, and we are holding there. Again, we're going to be looking for some leak checks and other system checks before we continue down to vacuum. Stephen Woody, I'm uh, just verifying that you copied my last uh, regarding the leak check. Hey, Farm so Todd, I'm 20 seconds remaining in the leak check. I am as well, breathing too. All right, uh, that is good. EV1 building check, carrying O2 actuator to EVA. EV1, EV2, good leak check, getting O2 actuator to EVA. Okay, guys, that is good. Uh, good leak check on both, and both you have the O2 actuator to EVA. Right, yeah. Now, Steve, you're going to go and make the deepest pump man ISO valve open again, and expect okay. an alert on. EV2 has O2 position EVA. And I have, let me double check. He wants an EVA as well. Okay. Three, uh, first time you station valve to open. It's open. And we just heard we have two nominal leak checks and we are continuing with Depress. The emergency MPEV is open. Monitor suit pair pressure gauge is always less than 5.5.
And that crew lock portion is now down to about 2.9 PSI. And we're looking for it to get down to vacuum. All right, Steve, we are at uh, 2 PSI. Take the deep breath, man, eyes are wild to close. Deep breath, front, man, isolation valve is closed. And on the UIA, switch deep breath, pump, power off. Deep breath, pump, power is off. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand you to the uh, your lovely ground IV, uh, Jenny, and you will report the initial tether configuration to her for Igris. And uh, with that, I'm going to say all the best for uh, this uh, EVA. I'm sure you're going to crush it just like last time. Uh, wish you all the best. We'll be here for support and uh, make us proud. Thank you so much, Sultan. You guys did a great job with suit up, and we look forward to seeing you in a few hours. Eddie, good morning. Houston is with you, ready for your tether text. All right, Jenny, I'm looking at the airlock D-ring extender. On that, I have Steve's left weight tether. It's a closed, locked, black on black, and the small hook of that weight tether is on his left D-ring extender, gate closed, locked, black on black. On Steve's right D-ring extender, we have his red hook, all Gate closed, lock, lock on black, going to his unlocked red reel, the anchor hook of the red reel. Gate closed, lock, lock on black to my left waist tether. Also gate closed, lock, lock on black. The small hook of my waist tether is on my left D-ring. Gate closed, lock, lock on black. Also on my left D-ring is my red reel. Gate closed, lock, lock on black. And that red reel is unlocked with the anchor hook on my video station. All right, we copy. That is a good config. Thanks, Jenny. When the crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, expect an alert tone. We have a little ways to go. Woody, that gauge starts moving really slow. It sure does. I can see it. <laughs>
If you're just joining us, you're seeing live coverage inside the International Space Station, and we're covering the 265th spacewalk for the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. We have NASA astronauts Stephen Boeing and Woody Hober going outside the hatch today to install an IROSO or an ISS rollout solar array on the 1B power channel. The crew so far today has gone and got in their suits. They did pre-brief. They had safers installed. They moved into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock and they have just finished depressurization. We'll be waiting for the crew to go onto that internal battery power and from there they'll be going will be starting the official time for today's spacewalk. Our duo are currently ahead of schedule. We have an estimated start time for today's EVA to be around 7.55 a.m. Central Time. However, again, the duo are ahead of the timeline. So once we hear the official go for internal battery power, that'll be the call out for the official start of today's spacewalk.
If you're just joining us, we are bringing you live coverage today. You're seeing a live view inside the International Space Station. We have a space-walking duo of NASA astronauts Stephen Boeing and Woody Hoberg, who will be venturing outside of the International Space Station today in the 265th spacewalk for the International Space Station upgrades, maintenance, and assembly. So far, NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen have completed pre-breathe. They've had their safers installed, and they are inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, where they have finished or just about finished their depressurization. Once they get down to complete vacuum, the duo will turn over to internal battery powers for their EMUs or those uh, mobility units that they're wearing, protecting them as they go outside of the International Space Station this morning. Again, once down to complete vacuum, the duo will do another system check, doing leak checks and communication checks with Mission Control Houston. And that'll happen before they put their suits on internal battery power. Again, this will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. And you just had a view of NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and Sultan Anayadi of the United Arab Emirates inside the equipment section of the airlock where they are continuing to monitor depress. They saw a camera out as they take pictures for the crew here on the ground that helps out with all the spacewalks. Again, we're in a brief period in between satellites. We'll have coverage back of the International Space Station here shortly. And you're seeing the Quetz airlock from the outside. Here shortly, we will see our spacewalking duo exit the International Space Station, exiting the Quest airlock.
Again, you're getting a view outside of the International Space Station of the Quest airlock, where our due will be exiting soon. The International Space Station is flying 258 statute miles, and they are flying above Italy currently. All right, Woody and Steve, it looks like we are below 0.5 PSI. We will get you to verify the EV hatch gauge is less than 0.6 PSI. AIC zero decimal four. Copy, Woody. Open and stow the EV hatch. Jenny, just for your awareness, I got the suit P high nuisance alarm. EV hatch open and stowed. Copy, Woody. And I copy the hatch is open and stowed. Hey, firm. Sultan, take the emergency MPEF to close. Okay, I got the Supi High message as well. Copy Supi High on Steve. And Houston from the airlock, the emergency MPEV is in closed position. Copy. Thank you, Sultan. And just to confirm, uh, no action on those messages. Like you say, those are nuisance alarms for both Woody and for Steve. We are going to move into post-depress. So on your DCM, switch power to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect a warning tone. Okay, EV-1 switching. B2, switch to the battery. EV1's in bat. EV2 is in bat. Copy, EV1 and EV2 in bat. Display Pro to verify functional displays. Display EV1. Display EV2. On the UIA, switch power EV1 and 2, both to off, OFF. Right, power EV1 is off. Power EV2 is off. Copy, Steve. EV2 Check EV2 power EV1 EV2 and down. 2 LEDs. All four are off. All four LEDs on power EV1 and 2 are off. On your DCMs, disconnect your SCUs, install your DCM covers, and stow the SCUs in their pouches. Give me one copy. Give me two copies. Copy two stowed SCUs. Check depressed pump manual isolation valve closed. 
Defense Vault Men License Valve is closed. Set your TCVs to max hot. TV1, max hot. TV2, max hot. Switch water on. TV1, water on. TV2, water on. Check DCM blank, bite off. And at 7.42 a.m. Central Time, the 265th Spacewalk in support of station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades has begun. Desired, report the setting and all subsequent TCV changes. Hoburg and Boeing are now on internal battery power. Copy five for EV1, four for EV2. Report suit pressure gauge. EV1, four decimal four. Uh, two, four decimal four. Copy both four decimal four. Set your visors as required. We have 21 minutes until eclipse. Visor down. And visors up for EV2. All right, copy both with that. Uh, Woody, you can open the thermal cover. You can stow the hook on the stiffener tether point, cinch the strap, and report the Sharpie lines visible. Okay, Jim, copy. Work. Steve, for you, you can retrieve crew lock bag M. You will be keeping this bag on your BRT. My crew lock bag M is about to my BRT rep. Copy. And Hoburg will now work to open that thermal cover and make their way outside of the space station hatch to begin their work for today. Uh, thermal cover, tether, thrown on a point with six lines visible. Copy, six lines visible. Woody, you can egress the airlock and inspect both load alleviating straps. Good work. And that was ground IV Jenny Gibbons to the crew, telling the crew they do have to go to open the thermal covers and exit the Quest airlock this morning. Jenny, both load alleviating straps look to be in good condition. I'm ready to perform the tether swap. Copy, Woody. You are go. You will need your yellow hook on the green reel, which is on the aft external D-ring. Benny, that's complete. Re uh, yellow hook, gate closed, locked to my previous green reel. Picking up the green hook. Copy. Woody and Steve, for your awareness, we have green a hook is we have we have a period yeah, of ratty calm coming up. We might lose you for about a minute. We're going to treat this like a short handover, so I'm still prime IV. Woody, I'll take your check. See you. Can you hear what you're at? You get it? I heard that. I just bump it. There it goes. Thank you. It's not wrapped around anything. Jenny, as I said, I have a good load path to the airlock. My yellow uh, hook is down, gate closed, locked, black on black to my green reel. And the green hook is also attached to my red reel. Gate closed, locked, black on black, and that reel's unlocked. I now have Steve's 
anchor hook. All corrections, Steve's yellow hook. Eight closed, locks block on block to Steve's green reel. I'm picking up Steve's green hook. We copy, Woody. All right, Steve's green hook is gate closed, lock, lock, unlock to his red reel. Both his red and yellow reels are unlocked. I see that as a good tether config. We agree, Woody. That is a good config. You can give Steve a go to release his waist tether. We'll have you positioned on the aft side of the airlock. If you have a go to release your waist tether and egress, I'm on the aft side. All right, you're on the outside. This other release of egress. Copy. Houston copies. Once you're out, you can both turn on your HECAs. And you just heard it, Ground IB confirming that Woody Hoberg, EV1, has exited the hatch this morning, and we are waiting for Stephen Bowen to join him on the outside of the International Space Station. Twenty seconds to a short handover. Okay. And we are in a brief handover period between satellites. We'll have views of the duo outside the International Space Station here for you shortly. Houston's back with you. Welcome back, Jenny. I'm going to be kicking off buddy checks in uh, just a moment here. Copy. Before doing that, let's close the thermal cover. I got it. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Hopefully it stays there. It's close to there. Want it tightened up a little, or? I think I'm okay. Okay. All right. I see. I need you for checks. Perfect. I see uh, one, two, three tabs up. Two mini workstation, one BRT. I'm looking at your safer handles. I see one. And currently no views of the duo, but both are outside the airlock at this point, and we hear them going through some buddy checks. They're making sure their cameras are good, their saver handles are down, and tethers and tools are in a good configuration before they begin their work today. That looks good to me, Steve. All right, what do you see? All right. One, two, super handles down, see three tabs up. I see your heck of light, but not your WVS. 
Okay, checking. Okay, checking. And Steve, I can see the WVS light is on. So this is the sun. Okay. Up there it is. Yeah, let's see it now. Alright, and I see the Seneca thing. Uh, as you stated, and you look good. Alright. My gloves are good, I have to try. Yes, gloves are good and half dry on EV1. Jenny, I think we're ready. I copy good buddy checks, dry hats, and good gloves. We are headed into a eight-minute data LOS. We will have voice the whole pass. I'm still Prime IV. You can begin your translation to the work site. Steve, you are leading. Let me know when you're ready for a caution. All right, give me one second. Just put my left wing feather on my left hand side. All right, heading up. All right, Steve, see you out there. Yep, you too. And you heard Ground IV Jenny Gibbons give the crew that eight minute warning. We won't have any views of the duo for about eight minutes, but um, we will hear them and they'll hear Jenny from inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. We get heard Jenny give uh, Stephen Bowen the okay to head over to his work site. Um, that work site will be the flight support equipment or the FSE work site. That is where the pallet is that currently holds the IROSA. Bowen is heading there to release some C bolts as Woody prepares to get on the Canada arm that SSRMS or that remote robotic uh, manipulator system um, will be used today to fly Woody around as he carries that IROSA to their work spot at that 1B power channel. Again, Flight Director Brandon Lloyd leading the room today. To his right is going to be that ground IV that I was talking about. That's Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jenny Gibbons. And to her right is Nick Haig. Again, we heard Nick earlier as the Capcom for the duo through Depress. And now we'll hear Jenny for the rest of the procedures and walkthrough of today's spacewalk. Again, in a LOS or a loss of signal currently. However, we will have a portion of today's spacewalk that will be conducted during an eclipse, which is necessary for the cable mating portion of today's spacewalk. Again, this is the only way to essentially stop the rays from gathering power from the sun. To keep our crew safe, we are conducting the cable mating once again in that eclipse time frame. Right now, we do have the duo that should be Woody Hoberg, EV-1, Extra Vehicle Crew Member 1, and Stephen Bowen, EV-2, Extra Vehicle Crew Member Number 2. They are outside of the station. Woody Hoberg is setting up that Canada Arm 2, while we have Stephen Bowen in translation over to that FSE, or that Flight Support Equipment, that pallet that currently holds the IROSA, or that ISS Rollout Solar Array.
after Woody Hoburg gets in the articulated portable foot restraint that is attached to that Canada arm too, he will head over to the FSE as well, where the duo will then release the IROSA from where it's currently being held. They will then use the Canada Arm 2 using a leapfrog maneuver where the duos each take it and release the IROSA until they get into their workstation at the 1B power channel. Again, after the IROSA is released from that flight support equipment pad, we'll see them re re relocate the IROSA from the FSC over to their new work site. Um, that work site will be at the 1B power channel, and that is the opposite. It's still on the starboard truss, but it is the opposite side of where last week's space spacewalk took place on the 1A power side. If you're just joining us, you're seeing a live view inside the in International Space Station Flight Control Room in Mission Control, Houston, where today we're bringing you live coverage of the 265th spacewalk in support of the International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Thus far, we had NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen exit the International Space Station officially starting today's spacewalk at 7.42 a.m. Central Time. The duo are currently outside of the International Space Station and they are heading to their first work site, that is the FSE, or the Flight Support Equipment Pad. Again, the FSE is that area where the IROSA is currently being held. Today's spacewalk will see the sixth IROSA mounted to the existing station solar arrays, the fifth array installed just last week on June 9th by the same duo. The new arrays are 60 feet by 20 feet wide, 60 feet long by 20 feet wide, and will shade a little more than half of the original arrays, which are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Each new IROSA will produce more than 20 kilowatts of electricity, and once all are installed, will enable a 30% increase in power production over the station's current arrays.
This is the sixth spacewalk for Expedition 69 and the eighth spacewalk of 2023 out of the International Space Station. We should begin views here shortly for you of the duo outside the International Space Station. We should have the values. Copy, Foco. Woody, can you ensure your tools and tethers are clear? Tools and tethers well clear, Jan. Screen rails unlocked, and Steve's tether is clear. Copy all. Eight, 12 inch, to my Copy, Steve. Next, you'll be breaking torque on C12 at Stanchion Alpha. Hold on, I've been thought. I just, I just heard something. I had the right socket. Let me get it on salt. Then yes, you're looking for the 5 8 12 inch. All right, it's installed with a good pull check. Copy, good no, pull I test. I am ready. Copy, good pull test, Steve. You can translate to stanchion alpha. We're breaking torque on C12. 12, breaking torque on stanchion alpha. Good words. No, the, uh, we're ready for the motion, so it's going to be station forward followed by station later. Go on, you go. How's the motion? And you're hearing UAE astronaut Sultan Adiyadi inside of the International Space Station who will be controlling that Canada Arm 2 that will be used to move around EV-1 Woody Hober, NASA astronaut, um, as he goes towards the FSC. Once released, we heard Stephen Bowen is going to be working on re releasing those sea bolts at the FSC that will release the IROSA. Copy, continue on three meters to go. Again, Woody Hoberg is going to be on the end of that SSRMS or that robotic manipulator system known as the Kenna Arm 2, which we use for today's spacewalk. He will be attaching the APFR or that articulating portable foot restraint to the robotic system. This will allow him to get on the end and fly technically. And, and we have our first views of the outside. Again, we see Woody Hoberg in the suit with the red stripes. He is inside that APFR or that articulating portable foot restraint on the end of the robotic arm. Behind Woody, you do see Stephen Bowen, the suit with no stripes. He has that pistol grip tool in hand, or that space drill, and he'll be using that today to create twerk and release sea bolts. It's a nadir back of journal cast of four and a half minutes. Sounds great. I'm ready. All right, Teddy, breaking tour. Bravo three. Five o'clock was two, less than half a turn. On C12. Good words. And that's complete. Copy, Steve. Stow your PGT and translate to C11, Stanchion Delta. All right, translating to C11. Woody, I'll take a glove inspection and half check from you. Absolutely. Uh, 
by Jim. Dry hat, no change to the gloves. Copy, dry hat, no change to the gloves, Woody. All right, Woody, uh, ready when you are for the journal cast. Your go. Copy, go, and start in motion. Motion. Copy, good motion. And again, you're hearing from UAE astronaut Sultan Anayati, who's inside of the International Space Station. He is controlling the Canada Arm 2 today with Woody Holberg, NASA astronaut at the end. We currently see Stephen Bowen, NASA astronaut, working to release the remaining bolts holding the IROSA on the FSE or that flight support equipment. Counterclockwise two. Correction, Steve. Two seven turns. Is that correct? Bravo three, counter okay. three. Bravo three, counter three, sorry. And I'm looking for two seven turns. A firm, you'll be releasing C eleven halfway. C eleven halfway. All right, 27 turns on C11. Copy, 27 turns, C11. You can retrieve the square scoop with the long duration tie down tether from the crew lock bag and stow it on your mini workstation. After that, we'll have you back at extension alpha. All right, that's been work. All right, let's go get it. on the left for the uh, blanket. The blanket? Yeah, it's just kind of getting down in there. You're looking good. Oh, okay. It's much better now. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're talking about. All right. Scoop with the LBT. And we did have good confirmation that the bolt was released, and Stephen Bowen is now going for that crew lock bag and removing that square scoop. Your next uh, motion is going to be a GCA to accomplish uh, IRO's uh, nadir position. We're expecting one meter for the end. Okay, Sultan, I'm ready for that. Okay, stand by until we set up the values. We'll give you a go. Let me go. Yeah, go ahead and set up the values, Sultan. Steve, 
looks like you're gonna beat me there. That looks good. I could probably reach it once I'm in there as well, but I think it's probably faster right now. All right. Woody, we're just going to go and hold uh, for now until uh, we get uh, confirmation from the ground. Okay. And for Steve and Woody, um, Sultan's right. We're just going to wait on that next remove uh, maneuver so that we can ensure Steve can translate back to the C-11 bolt following the ops he does after installing this scoop here. All right, I'm ready for PGT settings to remove the, well, that's what I'm doing. AFIRM, you are releasing C-12. Your settings are Bravo 3, counter 3. Bravo 3, counter 3. And look at 54 turns, correct? Affirm, those are good settings, and you'll be fully releasing C12. The bolt will spring out. Expect 51 to 54 turns. 51 to 54 turns, fully springs out. Okay. Good words. And with that C11 C bolt released, Sim Bowen has headed over to the C12 C bolt where he'll release that as well. All right, 54 turns. And it looks like it's spring up. I will double check. Happy 54 turns. in there, I can't tell if it's sprung out. I think I might give it a couple more turns just to verify, is that all right? Checking. It looks pretty far out, it just doesn't spring. Yeah, we're talking that, Steve. It seems like you'll have a hard time depressing it from where it is. Just because it's in a tight spot. Oh, there it is, okay. Yeah, it does move. You could push it with a PGT. We just sprung out. All right, so I think I'm complete here. I can install the scoop. All right, sorry about that, Steve. We can confirm that that is a good bolt, so you can stow your PGT, and then we'll have you install that scoop near C12. Okay. PGT is installed or stowed. Copy. Going on. 45. And that was a good release on C12. Okay, right, good pull tech. Great lock. Writing room or ret from the PGT. Stephen Bowen is now going to stow the pistol grip tool and install the scoop on the root beam yeah, micro square near the C12. Bolt. That's complete. 
the scoop and long duration tie on tether is now installed. And I'm going to head over to the weapon. Copy. Once you're there, I'll take a glove inspection and HAP check, and we'll coordinate with Sultan and Frank. All right, sounds good. Right, so you go get the other scoop and have it ready though, right? A frame. Sounds good, speed. Can we pick up the scoop? So Todd and Frank, I'm ready for that GCA. Get grounded, go. Naughty. Here we copy, and again, it's going to be a GCA to our published position. We're expecting one meter uh, body there. Go. And Houston is ready. You can proceed. All right, starting motion in body and direction. Steve, watch your bag again. Good motion, Sultan. Perfect, good motion. Again, you can see Woody Hoberg is on the move. He's working with Sultan Anayati, UAE astronaut inside the International Space Station. He's moving towards that FSE where Stephen Bowen has now released those sea bolts that will allow them to move and relocate the IROSA to the 1B power channel. No more action. Wrapping out. And we'll do that was uh, exactly uh, one meter station. Our oh, body end. Okay, so Tom, that's perfect. Could I also have 20 two zero centimeters body down? We copy 20 centimeters body down, starting motion. Motion. Good motion, 10 to go. And we'll leave that is 20 centimeters, body down. Okay, GCA complete. Uh, GCA complete, and brakes are coming on. Brakes are on, Woody, and we'll go for tethering. I've got a rat on the scoop, my right hand. I've got some checks to read you when you'd like. Copy, stand by one, Woody. Okay. Steve? Yeah. Your safety tether is around your left leg. Around my left leg only? Yep. Okay. If you roll toward me, I can probably fix it if you'd like. All right, I can do that. Yep, that's a good direction. That's really nice. Okay, hang on. Stay right here for a minute. I will. Okay, it's looking good. Thank you. Absolutely. That explains a couple things. <laughs> All right, we have uh, Steve, you've retrieved that scoop, is that correct? I have the scoop on me. I've got a good glove and good hat check. And if I'm ready, to set up for seal up. Copy, dry hat and good gloves, and we concur that's your next step. You can position for C11. At this point, caution and warnings for both of you. Prior to releasing our ROSA, ensure the FSC is not moving. Steve, remain still during our ROSA release. 
your fingers and, and we're seeing a helmet cam view from helmet cam number 20 that's being worn by Stephen Bowen Woody, we have 16 minutes until insulation. Ensure your cooling visor and glove heaters are set. Visor down, CCV4, glove heaters on. And my heels are secure in the boot plate. Ingress A, tools and tethers all clear. Copy, check gauntlets down. Gauntlets are down. Let's do a buddy check of each other's helmets for any signs of water. I have a great view into Steve's helmet, and I see no signs of water. Put your visor down. I can't see into yours anymore. Yeah, okay, hang on. <laughs> there you go, Steve. Yeah, I don't see any signs of water. Okay. All right. Get the end of the EVA when you take your visor off. <laughs> All right, copy. Those are good checks for everybody. So Woody, maintain control of Irosa while Steve releases this final bolt and gives Steve the go. When you're ready, I have settings. I have Irosa. I am waiting on seven settings. Bravo three, counter three, release C11 fully. This will be an additional 24 to 26 turns. Bravo three, counter three, additional 24 to 27 turns and work. Good work. And you just heard a nominal buddy check as the duo moved on. We hear Stephen Bowen is going to be releasing the final portion of that C11 bolt. Again, once this is released, Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen will be re releasing and lowering the IROSA, preparing it to relocate it to the 1B power channel. That was 27 turns. Right. Exactly. Good, I'm out of count. Copy, 27 turns, C11 release. I saw some movement there. You took it too loose? Yeah, it definitely feels. I'm trying to keep it on the pins this time, but I can tell it's released. All right, let me get a scoop in there. Sounds good. Good words. And that final bolt has been released. We need you at Stanchion Charlie. Copy. With that, Woody, if you've not already done so, you can slide Irosa away from you to release it from the FSE pin slot interface. Please. Steve, you can work with Sultan and Frank to maneuver Irosa clear of that grapple tower. Okay, Sultan and Frank, I am ready for you to take Irosa to the back off position. I will give you clearance to the grapple tower. Yes. And we copy that, uh, Steve. We are ready for the maneuver to the IROSA removal position. And uh, for you guys, it's going to be a body down for Woody, expecting uh, four and a half meters. Concur, ready. All right, start in motion, body down. 
Good motion. Copy. Good motion. That is good motion. Copy and continue. Clearance to the tower. Continue. Okay, continuing. Clear of the pillar. Clearance to the tower. Advise to the pillar. I'll try to do it. And we currently have a great view where NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg has a hold of the IROSA. It has been successfully removed from that FSE, that flight support equipment. Copy, clear of the pen. Motion continues. Houston copies that we are clear of the grapple tower, including the pen. This is now a GCA to a published position. I'm resuming calm with Steve. Steve, your next step is to perform a socket swap. All right, socket swap to the two inch fixed five eighths, correct? A firm, we'll stow the five eight 12 inch on the socket caddy and put that two inch, like you say, on your PGT. All right, that's good work. One meter to go. Continue. Okay, continue. And again, if you're just joining us, we're doing live coverage of the 265th spacewalk. This spacewalk is primary goals is to install the IROSA. We currently see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg holding the IROSA in hand as he's attached to the end of the cannon arm too. Full test, 12 inches of the socket caddy. Copy. Good pull test, switch to the, so to the PGT. Copy, good pull test on the two inch on your PGT. You can store your PGT. Well, we have NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg holding the IROSA. Stephen Bow and NASA astronaut is currently working to do a socket swap. He's still working at that FSE or that flight support equipment pad. After a successful socket swap, he's going to stow that pistol grip tool or that space drill. He's going to put it away in his crew lock bag. And then the duo are going to start trying to relocate that IROSA. Copy. We will have you clean up crew lock bag T. That means stowing the socket caddy and all external RETs, stowing them internally. And then you can button it up with the doors facing the FSC. Right. That's the work.
And Woody, uh, are we ready for the IROs? Uh, your join all caps. Okay, so down, I'm ready to yaw. Okay, remember to uh, your IROs are right in three, two, one, starting motion. Motion. Copy, good motion. Okay, I have only a adjustable on the outside of crew on bag T. That we see if that's a good config. I have it facing into the tower, so that should be good. Looks good to us. Check, make sure my tether's still going where I think it should. All right, I think I'm going to translate off and go pick up Woody's tether. Is that correct? A firm, you'll be translating to the port seat of cart. We'll have you retrieve your green hook first and then retrieve Woody's. Understand. My green hook first. Good words. Woody, we're in position hold now uh, for the second uh, journal cast. It's a handoff intermediate one, and we're expecting three and a half, mi three and a half minutes, yes. I'll be told on ready. All right, green hook, red reel, do close side lock. Go to pick up Woody's tether. Good config and a firm. Woody, or excuse me, Steve, Woody's tether is on the Nader Cedar Rail at mile marker 6210. 6210, heading there. Thank you. And for both of you, we are approximately one hour into this EVA. Total EVA time's looking like seven hours and 30 minutes with the limiting consumable being Woody's battery. You are 30 minutes up on the timeline. Great job. Copy. Thank you, James. Appreciate the update. Lee, we are ready for the uh, middle of the handoff intermediate position. And just a reminder, uh, this motion will take you body in and then followed by body right. Copy, Sultan. Thank you. I'm go. Right. And uh, starting motion. And three. Two, one, start the motion. Good motion. Good motion. Steve, we see you at Woody's green hook. We recommend that you stow this on your red reel. Stowing on my right 
We have Steve and Woody. We currently see NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg have released the IROSA out of the FSC or that flight support equipment. And Woody Hoberg is currently in movement toward that starboard truss S S6 where he will meet up with Stephen Bowen where they will install that IROSA for that 1B power channel upgrade. Alright, so I have Woody screen hook on my right waist tether and Currently seeing a helmet come through from Stephen Bowen, who'd be in, who is also starting his translation over to that S six or Starboard Trust. Copy. Confirm the reel is unlocked. Yeah, and Woody's reel is unlocked. Actually, my reel is unlocked. Woody's is. Mine is unlocked, but it's not pending. Hold on. Copy. It's not feeling. That's what I'm seeing. All right, so here he's I'm down. He's up. All right, ready to translate. Copy. You'll be translating outboard. Uh, we need a check that your gauntlets are down. On both sides are down. Copy. Ensure tethers don't cross, and you're headed to S5 to drop Woody's green hook. I'll have a handrail for you when ready. All right. I'm going to get on my way out there. Woody, our next motion is going to be the IROSA roll. Join our cast. We're expecting two minutes. Sounds great, Pokon. Ready. Copy, Steve. And with you, we are ready. And just a reminder to roll, I was uh, left. Copy, roll left. Your go. Three, then starting motion in three, two, one. Motion start. Motion. Copy the motion. Currently seeing live views outside the International Space Station during the 265th spacewalk. NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen have the IROSA in hand and are in translation to the S6 or Starboard Trust 6 location for that 1B power channel to install the IROSA. Hey, 
Usually it's my turn that hangs me up. It's time for the We have Woody Hoberg at the end of the Canada Arm 2. He's locked in with that articulating portable foot restraint. And we see Stephen Bowen translating or moving towards that same area. Again, that work site will be the 6S Truss. That's that Starbridge 6 Truss where they'll be working to install that IROSA for a 1B power channel upgrade. Seconds to a short handover. All right, I have Woody Green Hook. We are ready for the handover to media two. Join our cast, and we're expecting four minutes. Copy, Sultan. I'm ready. Houston's back with you. Be this motion is going this motion is going to take you body in and then body up. That looks right to me. I'm ready, Sultan. All right, then start the motion in three, two, one. Motion start. Okay, Jenny, I'm trying to figure out which angle I'm going to. 2127, is that correct? Affirm, and we have you, that you have Woody's green hook down on 2140. I just need to check that his green wheel is unlocked. I do. And the green wheel was unlocked. That is correct. Okay, then Affirm, you are headed to 2127 to place your green hook. Getting my green hook ready to install on Q1, Q7. Just over an hour and five minutes in today's spacewalk, NASA as astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen are currently heading to their next work site after releasing the IROSA from the FSE or that flight soft support equipment. Copy. Uh, and I will continue my translation. Stephen Bowen is translating, and we have Woody Hoberg, who will be waiting to hand off that IROSA over to Stephen Bowen. The duo will be doing a leapfrog maneuver, passing the IROSA off until they get to that starboard six truss area for that 1B power upgrade. Again, this is happening because the robotic arm does not reach all the way over to the starboard six truss. Two zero zero eight, I remember that handrail. Two zero zero eight, I'm ready. Affirm, you'll likely be a poor man, fair leading your tether around it to keep your tether stowed around the perimeter. Understand that's the. The new solar array, which was delivered to the space station on a commercial resupply service mission, or CRS-28, on June 5th, will ultimately increase the station's available power by 30%. This will be the sixth IROSA, or third pair, to be completed today. Two thousand eight. 
right, now I head across here, I'm at the cable bag. Correct, Eddie? Hey, from Steve. All right, I'm at the width. I'm looking at 12. Papa, Papa, Oxtrot. And looks like eight. Those are good settings. Steve, when you're ready, you can ingress the APFR, and I have some checks for you. All right, let me get uh, comfortable here. Moody, our next motion is going to be Davos, uh, hand off back of journal cast, and we are expecting two minutes. I'm ready, so far. And Woody, we are ready, and just a reminder, this is going to be uh, you, uh, buddy, right motion. Concur, so far, ready. The motion in three, two, one. Good motion. New coffee, good motion. And we see Woody Hoberg in motion at the end of the Canada Arm 2. He's been flown from the inside of the International Space Station by UAE astronaut Sultan Anayadi. And again, Woody Hoberg is being brought over to meet where Stephen Boeing is currently stationed. He's going to hand off that IROSA to Stephen Bowen. I can. Good clearing. I'm just trying to get my foot in. There's some difficulty. Just let me know if we need to pause. Um, all right, hold on. Oh, yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> Copy, Steve. Take your time for everyone's awareness. Uh, we just need our checks once you're in the APFR, Steve, so we will hold on the final manual maneuver for the handoff. Currently getting a helmet cam view from Woody Hoberg, EV1. Again, we see him with 
the Arosa in hand. He is preparing to pass that off to Stephen Bowen. And we see the feet of Stephen Bowen as he is going into his Arctic articulating portable foot restraint and we have switch views <laughs> and now have the helmet cam of Stephen Bowen looking out as he sees Woody Holberg holding the Irosa again we tell that that's Woody Holberg by the red stripes on his suit copy that you're in the APFR Steve well done Our checks are to ensure your cooling visor and glove heaters are set. We have 45 minutes until eclipse. All right. My cooling visor and glove heaters are set. Good hat, a dry hat, and a good glove inspection. And smudge on there. Or okay. Copy. Let's ensure your gauntlets are down. Down on Tools and tethers are clear, and your ingress aid is clear. Tools and tethers are clear, ingress aid is clear. Copy. So you can punch your bag to the left a little. Yep, yeah. good point, good call. Looks good. Thank you. Can roll that in a little bit. Yep. We copy good checks. And finally. That's good. How's that look? What do you think? Okay. Finally, Steve, ensure your heels are secure in the APFR. My heels are secure in the APFR. It definitely feels different without a BSI. All right, good to know. We copy all. Um, when you are ready, you both can give Sultan and Frank a go to the published handoff position. Your first step will be to perform a RET swap. So, Steve, you'll be attaching a RET to the IROSA root beam handrail. Property you for GCA. Ready for GCA. And we are ready, guys, for uh, the GCA to the publish IROSA handoff position. We're expecting 75 centimeters body in from Woody's perspective. Sultan, that sounds perfect. I'm ready for GCA. Start in motion in three, two, one. Good motion. I see good motion. Good motion. Continue. Continue. Again, you're seeing a helmet cam view from NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen. We see those iros is getting closer to him. Again, once given the go, we're going to see NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg hand off the Irosa to Stephen Bowen. Yeah, and we to the handrail. Continue. Copy, continue. Trying to go. Good stop motion. Just stop. All right, let me stabilize this out, Woody. You got it, Steve. Uh, I have the Irosa. Okay, you have the Irosa. Let me know when you want me to disconnect my rat. My rat is attached. I can see it. It looks good. Ready for you to detach your rat. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve and Woody, can we call that GCA complete? GCA complete. Stephen Bowen now has that Irosa in hand, and... Woody Hoberg is going to be detaching his retractable. He's going to be retracting his equipment tether from that IROSA. And Houston copies all. Copy a good red swap. We concur. Next is to get to the APFR egress position. And we now have a view from Woody Hoberg's um, helmet cam, that HECA high definition cam, where he is now looking over with. Looking over at NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen as he now has the IROSA in hand. And I see Woody with a camera in hand, ready to take a couple photos. And breaks off. Okay. 
Yeah. When you're ready, Woody. I'm ready, so God. Right, so this is going to be body out, just reverse uh, the motion that we did, gotcha. which is uh, 60 centimeters. That sounds great. And uh, sloppy motion. Motion. Good motion. Ramping out. Copy. And next uh, is going to be the egress back of John Ocas. We're expecting 1.5 minutes. I'm ready. And uh, with you ready when you are ready. Start your motion. Command send. Start your motion. Motion. Copy this motion. Now one hour and nineteen minutes into today's spacewalk. We have a few milestones to recap. The duo exited the hatch with the official start time of today's EVA at 7.42 a.m. Central Time. Duo then went over, translated by the Canada Arm 2. Woody Hoberg met Stephen Bowen over at the FSE where they released the IROSA from the pallet that held it. The duo then translated over into the furthest point where the Canada Arm could reach, Woody Hoberg has just handed off the IROSA to Stephen Bowen. This will continue a leapfrog maneuver where the duo hands off the IROSA to each other, moving it down the S6, the S6 truss to the installation location. Alright, we are ready for your go for GCA to a published APFR egress position. We're expecting one meter of body end. That sounds perfect for time, your go. Copy, starting motion. Motion. Copy, good motion. And again, you are seeing helmet cam views from Woody Hoberg, again attached to the end effector of the Canada Arm 2, where he has uh, situated himself on an articulating portable foot restraint. 
He is being moved by Sultan Anayati, who's inside the International Space Station. And brakes are coming on. Copy, brakes on. Degressing. And brakes on. You are go for APFI English. Copy, go. Thanks, Sultan. Houston copies. Just moved into position and given the go, Woody Holberg will egress that APFR, that uh, articulating portable foot restraint. Clear. Woody, we need you to stow the APFR ingress aid to the boot plate and then GCA if you need to to perform your tether swap. Yeah, I copy that, Jams. Get the uh, ingress aid in just a moment. So that's all right. Hey, firm. Short hand over. And if you're just joining us, we had a brief handover between satellites, but you're watching the 265th spacewalk for ISS upgrades, maintenance, and assembly. In the middle of your screen, you see EV-1 designated with the red stripes. That's NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He just egressed the articulating portable foot restraint that's on the end of the cannon arm too. He'll be meeting up with NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen, who currently has the IROSA. Again, the duo will be passing off the IROSA from each other to the other until they reach the S6 or starboard six truss where they'll be working to install the IROSA today. Everybody get that in your uh, tether can take call. We break that. Yep, I've got my green hook down, gate closed, locked on lock. Correction, gate closed, locked, lock on black to my red reel. Okay. Get off my yellow hook. Houston's following along. Yellow hook, gate closed, locked, lock on black to green reel, both reels unlocked. Good. That completes a good tether pass. Good config. Thanks, James. We need that ingress aid stowed to the boot plate, and then you'll be putting your green hook back on handrail 2140. Yep, copy.
right, 2140, correct? Hey, firm. Copy, thank you, James. Green hooks down, green rails unlocked. Copy, good config. Woody, you can give Frank and Sultan a go to the trust back off. Hey, Frank, Sultan, you guys are go for trust back off. Thanks for all your great flying today. And uh, we copy Woody, great job, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, brakes are coming off. Happy brakes off. Woody, you'll translate to Steve's boot plate. Use caution next to the radiator. It will be on your right once you're at the APFR. Thanks, Jim. So we get eyes on it. Okay, yep, I see it. After reconfiguring some tethers, Woody Hoberg is now attached back to the International Space Station and begin translating to Stephen Bowen. He gave the A-OK -okay for Sultan Adiyati, who was controlling the cannon arm, to from inside the International Space Station to a, do a back-off maneuver. Woody, we see you at the APFR. Caution, during this rotation, keep Irosa clear of the S-6 radiator. Copy, Jeff, thanks. Maybe two, Captain. All right, Steve, I'm ready. I've got the yaw pedal. All right. This is going to be a yaw to your left. All right. And I'll give you a countdown. I'll do depressing the yaw. Sounds so good. So you can get our rest started, and I'll depress the yaw. I'm ready. You're ready. Three, two, one, depress. Is that fuel on speed? Feels nice and smooth. Beautiful. All right, we're going. Currently with a helmet cam view from Woody Hoberg, we see Stephen Boeing in that articulating portable foot restraint where he's been manually turned by Woody Hoberg. All right, very nice. Again, with the arrows in hand, the duo will do a leapfrog maneuver once Stephen Bowen is in place. Woody will translate to the right location and take control of the Irosa. And the duo will do this a few times as the Irosa and the crew head towards the starboard six or S six truss where they'll be installing the Irosa for the one B power channel upgrade. You're getting close. Should be pretty close. Yeah, Steve, that's a yaw of three. Uh, to, to me, that looks good compared to a yaw of two. I'll take it. It looks good. Looks like you'll have room over there. Two. Sure. Yeah, okay. Great, you're back locked in. Thank you. Yep. All right, Houston copies. We are Woody, the at, in Washington. We copy. We are at a yaw of three. Woody, we need you to ensure that Steve that Steve's safety tether is clear for his eventual APFR egress, and we also need you to poor man's fair lead your tether such that it's under the APFR, so on the base handrail. Hey, yep, Steve's uh, tether is looking great. It's headed uh, directly station aft. Perfect. And my tether will be zenith of that and fair lead under the APFR. Copy. Like Jenny said. Great job, both of you. Woody, translate outboard. We want you at the uh, at handrail two zero six zero. 
and you will be placing a rich man's fair lead on the mod kit right lower strut handrail or on S6. We just need it to be clear of the APFR. Okay, 2060 for the fair lead or on the mod kit. A firm, and this is a rich man's fair lead. Okay, thanks. I'm Steven Woody, I'm going to be in motion, so. Excellent. Excellent. Can you just confirm 2060 is acceptable for the fair lead? Affirm, S62060 is acceptable. Thank you. For both of your awareness, you are still doing great on the timeline. We're about 20 minutes away from a eclipse. That is not our working eclipse, so we are not Russian. Okay, thanks, James. Alright, fairly down on 2060. Yeah. Copy, fairly 2060. You'll next want to verify your APFR, APFR settings. settings. Yep, I see a clocking six, box box. I see Echo, I believe we want Fox Trot. A firm, it should be Fox. Okay, moving to Fox. The fox set and the yaw is two. Good settings, you can ingress the APFR. Happy, thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Steve. You know, if you need more room at your head, should be good. After translating to the forward edge of the S6 truss, Woody Hoberg is now ingressing a different APFR. Well, he will then take control of the IROSA from Stephen Bowen. Prior to taking control of the IROSA, they will do another happen gauntlet check. Again, that HAP is that helmet absorption pad and gauntlets are those coverings on their arms, their suits where it covers their arm plate and where their hands Copy. attach. Your we need your cooling visor and glove heaters set. We have 21 minutes of insulation. Hey, Jenny, I'm still at a TCV of four visors down, glove heaters on, and gauntlets are down. Copy. Ensure tools and tethers are clear and your ingress aid is clear. Tools and tethers are clear. Tethers heading back down to the fair lead. Ingress aid is clear. Copy. Ensure heels secure in the APFR. Heels are secure. All right. We see you have a ret on the scoop in your right hand. We also need one on the long duration tie down tether. All right, I got two reps down, one each side. All right, copy. Steve, up. I have IROSA. I have IROSA, I'm going to take my rep, connect it to the adjustable, and then remove the uh, butt ball set. Sounds great. Good work, Steve. 
And you just heard confirmation from NASA astronaut Woody Holberg. He has now taken control over the IROSA from Stephen Bowen. Yep, copy. Put off, copy. Let's get on. Okay. They are off and clear. Looks great. I've got it. All right, let me. Copy all, Steve E. Crespi, APFR. Steve Bowen will now reposition himself. He will egress his APR FR, meaning he will get out of it. He will then translate over to Woody and perform the same task that Woody did to him previously. And they will hand off the IROSA one more time before they reach the S6 truss or the work site where they will be installing the IROSA today. My tethers are clearing. Your safety tether looks great on the right side, Steve. Thank you. So what I was looking for. Make it the good position. One second to get these stowed here, Woody, and I'll be on my way. Take your time. I actually have them to a handrail. I have them to a handrail number 2034. Copy, Steve. Right, and I'm releasing my vet. And I'm translating over to Woody. Good words. We are to your right. Yep. Can you say that again? What was that? What was that? Uh, I wasn't sure if you were going down to follow your safety tether or just coming direct. Well, nope, coming direct. Okay, copy. Houston concurs. Uh, Steve's headed out to you directly, Woody, and then he will come back inboard and go around the other side of S6 later on. Got it. Hello, Steve. Hey, Hello. Just let me get in a good position to do this. Okay. I'm going to get my feet above the radiator. Look, I'm going to swing it all the way around. I see that. So it went in front of my body, I hope. Or did I put my tether behind me? Your safety tether is in front of you on the left side. It is in front of me. So it's in front of my body. Yes. Okay. That's what I was. Yep. It's just hard to see with the uh, BRT. Yep, I see that. There it goes. Nice. Ah, I agree with you. That's what I wanted. <laughs> All right, I'm at T06 there. Let me get stable. Okay. And you have a view on your screen. In the middle, you see the cannon arm, too. Below that, you see the two astronauts. EV-1, designated by the Red Stripe, is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. And right below him, or 
above on your screen is going to be Stephen Bowen, NASA astronaut. He is at Woody's APFR or articulating portable foot restraint. He's going to turn Woody to the right and he's going to line up that Irusa in Woody's hands with the mounting bracket. Currently at two. And Jenny, I'm going to six, is that correct? Good words. Sounds right. And Ma is on your right. Yep. O is on your left. Verifying that. Concur. All right. And I'm ready. Three, two, going right. Want to start? Three, two, one, start. Got good motion. And we're currently seeing a helmet cam view from Stephen Bowen, and he is turning that portable foot restraint with Woody Hoberg attached. Irosa in hand, turning to the right. The Irosa will be lined up with the mounting bracket. config. Uh, big picture call for all crew. We are two minutes from a 14 minute LOS. We are go to push with the nominal procedure. Frank, we are in block six, step 27 for Steve. Session copies, lock six, step 27 for Steve. A firm, Frank, you are prime IV. Happy Jane, thanks so much. Okay, Frank, I'm going to start working my way over. Make sure I'm clear of Woody's tether and the radiator. 
And you just heard Ground IV here in Mission Control Houston pass on the control of IV position over to Frank Rubio inside the International Space Station. And she did that because we have an LOS, uh, about a six minute LOS, eight minute LOS coming up here. Um, and again, that is a loss of signal. Put fingers and eyeballs of pink clouds out of the inside and outside of the Rubian structure. When on the aft side of the mod kit, avoid contacting legacy blanket boxes and protruding trunnions. Understand. Okay, and then the cautions have to do with uh, loads and rates on structure. Uh, any questions on that? No questions. Okay, and so you are translating to position on the left side of the mounting bracket for I was saying so. I agree. After positioning Woody Hoburn to the mounting bracket with the IROSA, Stephen Bowen is now in translation to head over to the far side of the mounting bracket himself, and they'll prepare for the IROSA install. All right, that's what I'm doing. And this begins that LOS period. You're seeing a live view inside the International Flight Station control room. Again, we have uh, about an eight minute LOS, and that's going to be for um, audio and visual happening here. The flight control team here in Mission Control Houston taking the time now to get a restroom break in. But don't worry, again, that ground IV. Jenny Gibbons passed over control to the International Space Station where Ivy Frank Rubio is walking the duo through the next steps. We had last visuals of Frank, excuse me, we had last visual of NASA astronaut Stephen Boeing translating over to that left side of the mounting bracket. Again, once he is there, he will be close to Woody Hoberg, who has the IROSA in hand, and they'll be at that work site where they will install the IROSA for that 1B power channel upgrade. Currently on your screen, you had a view of the International Space Station, and you see that far left of the screen is where we're installing today. Um, the duo on June 9th, just last week, installed that IROSA on the 1A power channel, and we will be installing the IROSA today on the 1B power channel, just the opposite side of where they worked last week. Today's spacewalk is being conducted by Expedition 69 spacewalkers, flight engineers, NASA astronauts, Woody Hoberg, and Stephen Bowen. Today, Stephen Bowen is EV-2, while Woody Hoberg is EV-1. The duo switched roles from last week, where Stephen Bowen was EV-1, and Woody Hoberg was EV-2. Today is Woody Hoberg's second spacewalk. Well, it is the 10th for Stephen Bowen. With this spacewalk, Bowen ties 
Most spacewalks by a U.S. astronaut with Michael Lopez Alegria, Bob Banken, Peggy Whitson, and Chris Cassidy. Bowen has accumulated 60 hours and 22 minutes of spacewalking time in his previous nine EVAs or spacewalks. Woody Holberg has a previous six hours and three minutes of spacewalking time. Again, you have live coverage today of the 265th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly, Maintenance, and Upgrades. This is the eighth spacewalk from the Space Station in 2023 and the sixth spacewalk for Expedition 69. Again, you're back inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. We're about three and a half minutes into about an eight minute LOS where we have no audio or visuals of the spacewalk. Again, you see the flight controllers here taking that time to get a break going to use restrooms and other facilities.
If you're just joining us, you're looking live inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Mission Control Houston. Currently, you are getting live coverage brought to you for the 265th spacewalk in support of ISS maintenance, upgrades, and assembly. We have two spacewalkers outside the space station currently. We have NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Bowen who have exited the International Space Station this morning at 7.42 a.m. Central Time, who have now successfully released the hours from the FSE or the flight support equipment, and they have now translated it over to its work site. Um, the Starboard 6 truss, or the S6 truss, as you'll hear it. Again, we left the duo a few minutes ago in an, with an LOS, or a loss of signal, we have no audio or visual currently of the spacewalk, but the duo are being helped by those on board the International Space Station. We have IV Frank Rubio, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio is currently taking over the role from the ground as the IV helping the duo through the procedures as we are in the loss of signal. We should have that signal back here in about five minutes. Feeling good. Hang on. We're really close right now, Steve. Let's not move it too far from nope. here. Can you actuate your? Uh, okay. Trying to. No. Yeah. It's popped up. Meaning it's engaged. Looks like it. Yeah. It's engaged. And we have audio back. Okay, that's good news. Hang on. How's yours? Mine's not in yet. Thank you. 
I copy your location and the procedure. Great job, Frank. I'm ready for you to hand it over back to me when you are. Okay, so once again, block seven, step five complete for Woody, and Steve is currently in step seven. Woody, uh, Jenny, you're fine. Thanks so much. Great job, Frank. I'm Prime IV. I copy Steve that you are retrieving the adjustable with the uh, RET for the scoop stow. I'm looking for that one here. Not the right one. And Woody, can you confirm That's that the, the right left hand scoop has been removed from the root beam so it's on your mini workstation? Confirm, Jans. I have two scoops connected by a long duration ready to my workstation. I'll give you one second. I'll get to that adjustable. Thank you, Steve. Copy all. Actually, not the one in the bag. It's the one on the bag. Jenny, I have Bravo 2 counter 2 set when it's time. Good settings. Go for R6. Actually, negative, Jan. Let's wait on that. That way we can wait for Steve to control it. A firm. I don't see another adjustable in there. One, two, there it is. Do you see the uh, cap keeper, Steve, stuck yeah, in my way? It's the one the other way. What's cap keeper, too? Yeah. Okay. Here's the, uh, here's the other adjustable. Great. Here's scoops for you for that adjustable. And okay. here, I'll trade you one second. Give me a second. Copy. Ah, oh, there you are up there. Okay, give you have the cap keepers. Got it. And I'll take a scoop. Here's two scoops for you. Just let me know when you want me to release my rep. Give one second. Take your time. All right, I got adjustable for that one. And an adjustable for this one. And I'm going to release your red. Okay, Steve, ready? Or ready. All right, ready for it? There it yep. comes. I see it. Thanks, Steve. All right, let me show this. Since you've got the ARD, I mean, the uh, cap keeper and the uh, Amen. Yep, and if Jan's is okay with it, I'm going to remove the four caps from my Rosa. A firm, you can remove the caps, Woody. Thank you, Jenny, and I have the AMS knob on my mini workstation. We copy. Back soon. Sure, I'm back in the future. Thanks. Stand by. Copy. All right. I need to be able to hold this thing closed. Okay, cops are going back to the bag, Steve. You can just leave them on the outside for now. I am ready for you to engage the R6 bolt. I'm holding it closed. Copy that. Steve, we do want you in position to keep Irosa folded up while Woody does that R6 bolt, but I'll also take a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check from you. <laughs> but I 
I'm already in position. If you give me a moment, I'll give you those calls uh, as soon as we get them done at this point. Okay, we copy. That's fine with us. Woody, you'll be releasing R6. The bolt will spring out. We're looking for a white line visible, and you can expect 18 to 20 turns. Copy, Jims. Bravo 2, counter 2, set. Starting turns. Good words. Two hours and ten minutes into today's spacewalk, we have NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Boeing outside the International Space Station as they have now removed the Nairosa from its flight support equipment pad and they have translated it over and relocated it to the S6 part of the truss. We currently have the duo installing that IROSA. Copy 17 turns. The bolt has sprung out. Can you see a white line? Woody Hoberg is currently releasing a final hinge restraint with the pistol grip tool or that space drill. And then egress the APFR using the ingress aid only. Okay, PGG Spode, egressing, ingress aid only. Jams, what, um, yeah, all right, sounds good. Okay, good place to do the, uh, MDGLs over I was wondering. Yeah, it's just because stability is so nice in the APFR, I'm thinking about uncapping these MDGLs that are right beside me. I don't mind waiting. Checking. What a year ago. Champs. While you're doing that, I can give you your PET. We are two hours and 10 minutes into a seven hour, 30 minute EVA, limiting consumable Woody's Medox, and you're 45 minutes up on the timeline. Great work. Caps down, two to go. Houston copies. And thank you for the update, James. Three down. Nice to be stable. That's pretty cool. Okay, caps removed. We'll make sure that you stay clear for unfold. All right, let me draw things to Steve. Copy all. And for both of your awareness, we have our video back. And we now have visuals back of the duo outside the space station today. The ingress aid is low profile and fair lead under the APFR. We'll have you on the right side of the mounting bracket for unfold. Okay, concur with all. Already fair lead. And ingress aid is low profile. While we had no visuals, we did have the duo begin the install of the IROSO onto the mounting bracket for the 1B power work site. Earlier, the duo did confirm to soft capture for the IROSA. Right now, we'll see them move around and reposition themselves to the right side of the mounting bracket for the unfolding to begin for the IROSA. Warning, pinch point, keep clear of rotating IROSA. With that, Steve, you can slowly pivot IROSA to the unfolded position and Woody engage the right side alignment guide and slot.
Copy. Unfolding. See it. Good. Keeping everything out, looking pretty. Mounting plate is clear. Oh, oh, all those caps just got in there. I see them. They're staying on the uh, uh, stop on hold. Let me just make sure these stay out of the way. Yeah. There we go. It's off in my way again. Okay. You got your gears. They're clear. Copy. Sounds good, soft capture. I see it. Copy. You see the soft capture feature engaged. Well done, both of you. Next step is to drive R7 and R8, the hinge bolts. That's for you, Woody. For Steve, I'll take a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check. Half is dead, half is dry. Can I copy R7 and R8? Just out of curiosity, how much time do you have left in this eclipse? <laughs> You have 15 minutes left in this eclipse, which is not enough time for our cables, so we'll be working other steps, and our target eclipse is still the next eclipse. Okay. All right, my gloves look good, same as before. Copy all good checks on Steve. And Steve, I understand the AMS knob is already with Woody on his mini workstation. All I have for you in this time is to stow is. the scoops and long duration tie down tether in the bag if you've not done so already. I am working on those things right now. Copy. Certain. working on the AMS knob is the next thing. Well, when he gives it back to me. Copy. Duo working in orbital nighttime. Copy. Your settings are alpha one, clockwise two. Alpha one, clockwise two. Good words. You'll be driving these bolts to torque. Expect 14 to 17 turns. Okay, thank you. Alpha 1, clockwise 2 is set. Good words. Starting with R7. Copy, R7. And we have helmet cam view from Woody Hoberg, EV1, who is releasing hinge bolts on the IROSA. Again, once these hinge bolts are released, Steve Bowen will be able to help Woody Hoberg unfold the IROSA and then we'll be looking for the next eclipse time period for the duo to start cable mating and then the full deployment work for the IROSA. I counted 17 and a half turns and I have a good green light with two decimal three foot pounds on R7. R7 driven 17.5 turns to torque, 2.3 foot-pounds and a green light. Okay, 
confirm. Ready for R8. You can move to R8. Same settings. R8 same settings. Alpha one clockwise two is set. Good words. I counted 17 turns. I have a good green light. Two decimal four foot pounds. Two decimal four foot pounds, 17 turns, green light. That is a good bolt, Woody. You can stow your PGT and now work with the AMS knob to loosen those bolts one turn each and then tighten them till just snug. Okay, PGT stowed, working the AMS knob. R7 reset, I've been a quarter turn off, quarter turn on. Copy, quarter turn off and on in R7. Same on R8. Copy the same on R8. You can give the AMS knob to Steve to stow in the bag. And what again, with the cap keeper. Yeah. There it is. Better. What are that? It will be done. All right, Steve, you have the app keeper and AMS knob. Thank you. Thank you. I have some big picture words for both of you when ready. 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 Okay, our timing has been great so far. We are headed into insulation. So we will push with uh, driving the M bolts and do as much as we can prior to the cable mates. Um, that will involve a bit of a replan. We'll give you information on some cleanup steps that we're going to get ahead on. Those aren't quite ready yet, but when they are, I will get words to you. So next steps for Steve are to get ready for those M bolts. You can divide those up however you want, but the socket for the M bolts is on Steve's PGT. And we copy. We copy the jams. Um, hey, Jenny, I'm right in front of J1 through J4. Is it a good time to get those mated? So, Woody, I'm just pausing on that because they might interfere with the M bolts, but we're talking it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, just a reminder, we did those first on the last one. Copy. We understand, Woody, but we're going to keep things simple. We're going to hold off of those until we're done the M bolts because we have so much time before our working eclipse. Sounds good, Jim. Thanks. All right, we'll get, I'll get my side, you get your side, we'll get this bag closed, and we'll start. That sounds great, Steve. All right. All right. All right. See, Bravo five, clockwise two, and how many turns is it, Kenny? Those are good settings, and we're driving to torque. Expect eleven to fourteen turns. Give us a heads up on hand starts. Okay. This is 31. 
I've got a full turn of the hand start. Copy, M31, one turn of hand start. Drive to torque and black line flush. If you're just joining us, you're seeing live views outside of the International Space Station as NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Stephen Boeing are installing an IROSA on the 1B power channel. Copy M31, 11 turns, 21.9 foot pounds, and a green light. Can you confirm the black line flush, Steve? And black line is flush. Currently have a helmet cam view. You can move to M32. All right, M32 has low hand start and start turn. You're currently seeing a helmet cam view from NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen. He's using that pistol grip tool or that PGT to release hinge bolts on the IROSA they just installed. He is working on the left side while Woody Hoberg released his bolt on the right. Again, you can tell who is who by the stripe designation on the suits. Red stripe is the EV-1 worn today by Woody Hoberg. You're dope. Copy, go. Thanks, James. Let's get the right torque here. All right, I got 11 turns. Oh, and I did not get a good green light yet. I am flush. Copy, that was 11 turns, a green light, and can you say again the torque for M32? 0.2.6. We're checking on that bolt, Steve. Jenny, on M37. Sorry again, Benny. And Steve, we're going to have you go back to M32 again. We're just looking for um, an additional quarter turn on that bolt to reach our minimum. Okay, I got good block. All right. And I got a turn. And I got 22.0 that time. About one turn. Okay, I'm happy, Steve. We're checking on it. All right, Steve, good bolt. You can move on. All right, let me get myself around to a better position. My right. All right. Hey, Jenny, on uh, M37, I had 11 turns, good green light, 22 decimal zero foot pounds. Copy, that's a good bolt. And M35, 11 turns, good green light, 21 decimal, 9 foot pounds. Copy, and those are both good bolts. We track a hand start on both of those. Copy. Yep. Oh, I have a 
34. You had a head start, and I've got 11.4 turns and 22.6 foot pounds. Okay, Charlie, left to go for me. Copy, Steve. Can we verify black line flush? And black line flush on 34. Copy, that's a good bolt. Jam jam 36 at one hand start, 11 turns, green light 21 decimal 9 foot pounds. Copy. That is a good bolt, Woody. Thank you. Driving M38. I can have start M33. Driving. Copy both. All right, hey, Jam's got a report on M38. Ready. I'm 10 turns down. It was not hand started. Unfortunately, I don't think the thread's engaged for approximately the first eight turns. I think I'm about two turns of threads in on M38. Copy, what are you were talking at? All right. 33, 11, well, 12 turns by my count, 1.86 on the thing with a good green light at 22.2 for both. Steve, that is a good bolt. And for Woody, uh, we appreciate the report. Let's keep driving that bolt, and we'll do the math on the ground, so just report the new number of turns you get. Starting from what I'm guessing is two turns engaged, starting turns. Okay, Jan, I have seven and a half turns, green light, 22 decimal one on M38. And black line flush on all nine bolts. Copy, we're checking on that final bolt, Woody. Thank you. All right, Woody, we're going to go back and have you do that bolt again for some additional turns. Same settings. You got it. Five, clockwise, two, set, M38. Green light, no turns, 21 decimal nine foot pounds. Woody, that is a good bolt. Thank you. That's a good bolt. Thank you, Jams. I'll have more words for both of you in a minute. Let me, I'll go through my cable bag. That might be a good thing to do. And then I'll swap sockets, and I can probably hit these four connectors. 
All of those are involved in the. All of those items are involved in the plan that we're putting together. I'll have it for you in a minute. Thank you. Sounds great to us. Entering into an orbital daytime, the International Space Station is flying 268, excuse me, 256 statute miles above the South Pacific Ocean off the west coast of the United States. And we just saw Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen complete some bolts. Uh, releasing some bolts on the hinge joint of the IROSA that they just installed. Carrying us through the next set of procedures is my colleague Rebecca Wicks, who will continue coverage today. Woody and Steve, thanks for your patience. We have words for you now. Um, we are going to do a modified get ahead on our worksite cleanup. Steve, you will be mating the NZGL connectors. You can get in position for that. And Woody, you will be translating inboard to the APFR in WIF 1515. That is the APFR that we used for the first handoff of IROSA. I will also need words on your pull test if you did a socket swap. I did not talk, it's probably a good pull test. Copy with one five. Copy. So we need to clean up my tether. Let me come back, we Okay. You want me to take a look at it? Let me see. Yeah. Let's do a quick look. Get it around me right now, I think. Yes, you sure do. Let's see. There you go. Thank you. It's, it's behind me, right? It's, no, now it's in, uh, I put it in front of you. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So now it's, uh, right side cropping toward your left. Okay. And then clear. Caution for both of you, Steve, before you start mating these NZGLs, just avoid contact with the cables and connectors when they are attached to IROSA. We are bringing you live coverage of US EVA-88. This is the eighth spacewalk out of the International Space Station this year. We started this morning at 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.42 a.m. Central Time. The team has been very efficient in their tasks. First, the NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen exited the International Space Station. They released the IROSA, or the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, from its flight support equipment area. They relocated it to the starboard truss at the 1B power supply. To get there, they utilized the robotic arm 
Emirati Space Agency astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi inside the International Space Station maneuvered that robotic arm. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg flew on that robotic arm holding the solar array. When they arrived close to the work site, the astronauts then used a leapfrog maneuver to pass the IROSA between themselves in order to reach that workstation because the robotic arm didn't quite reach. From there, they installed the IROSA and released hinge bolts. Next up in their timeline was going to be to mate the cables. However, they have to do that in an eclipse. We have about 50 minutes until that eclipse starts, so the flight control team here in Mission Control Houston made the decision to proceed with a work-ahead task, which is what the astronauts are currently on their way to do. P2 with a good mate, over center. Copy, P2 mate it to J2. All right, P1, J1. This your pins. Be in my band, no fraud. Good checks, your go. Woody, you will be stowing this APFR on your BRT and then translating to the port CETA cart to drop it off. Okay, pick up this APFR, take it to the port studio cart. Thanks, James. Affirm, I have instructions on your green hook along the way. Okay. I will plan to pick it up. Okay, any other instructions? You'll be picking it up then installing the APFR and the port CETA cart. I'll give you the whiff and the settings when you're closer to it, and then you'll be translating back outboard, dropping your green hook in the same spot. Okay, thanks, James. As part of, as part of this work site cleanup, they are going to be retrieving their articulating portable foot restraints and stowing those with the body restraint tether. All right, D1, J1, Viz, over center with good connection. Copy, P1 mated to J1. I track that that is your last NZGL connector, correct, Steve? I agree. All right. And you want me to pick up the scoop with the uh, calf, put that in M1? We need to leave the scoop there for Woody to use later. Oh, good point. I get too far ahead, I guess. But next step for you, Steve. What am I using it for, James? Okay. Say again. I just, yeah, disregard. Okay, we're about 30 I think seconds. I'd probably be okay without that scoop, but. Let's leave it. We're 30 okay. seconds from yeah. a short handover. Steve, go get the mutt end effectors. You'll be stowing them in the cable bag. Mutt end effectors for the cable bag. All right, I'll look pretty clear and I'll head over that way.
We have an expected loss of signal on our video views as the International Space Station flies around the Earth. Those data links transfer between satellites. During this handover, you can see live views of the Mission Control Center in Houston. Brandon Lloyd is our flight director today. He's part of the 2021 class of flight directors. To his right in the black shirt is Jenny City Givens. She is a Canadian Space Agency astronaut. She is the main voice you are hearing speaking with the crew. She is the ground IV. IV stands for intravehicular. She is the person that is talking to them while they are outside the space station on their spacewalk. The crew is performing some cleanup tasks as they are ahead of schedule. We are waiting on that eclipse to start so that they can safely mate those cables in the dark. Copy, Woody. Woody, you will be stowing that APFR in the port Zeta cart with three. That's Zenith Starbird. With three Zenith Starbird, thanks. CETA is a cart. CETA stands for Crew and Equipment Translation Aid. He is going to be storing his portable foot restraint on that cart. This is a live helmet camera view from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He is translating back to the IROSA worksite. Correction, he is going to the Zenith starboard side for that CETA cart in order to install his portable foot restraint. This is a view of that S6 Starbird worksite where the IROSA solar array is installed and waiting to be. Copy, Steve.
Steve, now that you have stowed those MUT end effectors in the cable bag, we'll have you translate back out to the mod kit and more steps for you shortly. Woody, I have more big picture words for you as well. Hey, James. Trying to get eyes on WIC 3. And is it on swing arm 3, James? Do you know? Hey, from Woody, that's it. Okay, that's it. Copy. Um, all right, James, I'm ready for APFR clocking and big picture words. Clocking of 12. And uh, when you install this APFR, we'll take your checks and we'll also have you uh, adjust the MLI on the ingress aid. Best effort, we know that these are tough, but try and get the metal covered up as best you can, please. MLI stands for multi-layer insulation. Everybody, just let me know when you get back out here. I'm need, uh, going to need you to move my face each other back to the other side again. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. We are currently two hours and 51 minutes into our spacewalk. Walking 12, walking color black on black. It's not, can be depressed and is locked, and I fixed the MLI. All right, copy all. Now, big picture, Woody, we're still tracking like 40 minutes until your guys' is working eclipse time. So that means that we do have time for you to get onto the SSE and get that beam so at this time, we'll have you translate onto the FSE. You do not need to place any uh, rich man's fair lead on the FSE. The FSE is the flight support equipment. That was that initial work site, the initial work site where they retrieved the IROSA at the beginning of today's spacewalk. We'll at extension Alpha, Woody. Okay, Alpha, thanks. NASA astronauts Steve Bowen and Woody Hoberg. Continue to be ahead of the timeline. The solar array installation steps are complete. The team is waiting on the beginning of a working eclipse to begin the power connector mates. While they wait, the astronauts are getting ahead on some cleanup steps. These suits continue to perform well. We expect no suit constraints on today's operations. All right, Steve, we see you back at the mounting bracket. For you, we don't have much to do while Woody does these FSE beam ops. Um, but we would like you to check and replace the MLI, which is on the mounting bracket. I have three locations for you to do that when you're ready to copy. Okay, ready to copy. We want you to check the right lower strut, left lower strut, and right mid strut MLI. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg has successfully completed a work ahead step of stowing his portable foot restraint unit onto a cart. He is now headed to the flight support equipment area where he will be stowing a beam. Copy, Steve. Uh, 
That one's better. It's on the bolt now. Brown looks like it's in. Copy, Steve. Do you have video? We do have video. Hey, from. Okay, that should look a lot better than it did. It does, thank you. Is there something lower on the lower strut or just on the right lower? Checking. This is a view of NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He is EV-1 today, and that is designated by the red stripe on his spacesuit. Copy. Woody, you are going to have to relocate the adjustable equipment tether from the lower stanchion of the FSC handrail to the top stanchion of the FSC handrail, and we'll also need to socket swap before we start bolt-ups. When the astronauts are conducting spacewalks, they have two tethers. Would be a reminder for you, when you're on the FSC, no sudden movements, quick grabs, or sudden stops and we'll wait till FSC motion dampens out before imparting any loads. Copy, adjustable swap, socket swap and work. Copy. on that one. I think I did better there. Happy Steve. Okay, Jenny, stop it. Swap with a good pull test. Right, that should look a lot better. Is that all right, Jenny? All right, do you want me to go back and get more? Copy, Steve. We're checking, and I copy the good pull test for Woody. Woody, you can hand start C3 one turn. C three one turning on certain work. Just that there a little bit more. To loosen the adjustable on the other side to allow that. Let me see. We copy, Woody. We might have to head over there to do that. That's okay. And yeah, I think so. All right, we copy. Steve, next for you is to check the MLI on the left lower strut to the mounting bracket. The other ones look good. Great job. Good words. Yeah, I probably did that today. I have an updated PET for both of you. 
We are three hours into this EVA. Our limiting consumable is Woody's battery, and we're tracking toward seven hours and 30 minutes in total. We are way ahead of the timeline as you guys are doing cleanup get aheads. We have still just over 30 minutes to our working equips, so lots of time to get these done. Thanks so much for the update, James. We appreciate it. There you go. Doing a great job. Jenny City Gibbons from Mission Control Houston, the spacewalk communicator today for the crew, just gave an update on our timeline. We have just reached three hours in the spacewalk, and we are running um, well ahead of schedule. The crew is currently working on some get-ahead tasks. Right now, we are waiting in about 30 minutes for an eclipse to start. Okay, I got two, maybe three turns of hand start on C3. Copy, two to three turns hand started on C3. You can translate to Stanchion Bravo. We'll be relocating that adjustable equipment tether from the lower to the upper stanchion like you did at Stanchion Alpha. I already completed that actually, Jams. I had to go do that in order to give myself enough slack. Okay, copy, great work. Um, stand by one. And Woody, did you hand start C5 as well while you were over there? I did not. Okay. C3. We need to hand C5 start. C5 is, uh, okay. Hey, Firm, we need to hand start both bolts before we drive any of them. Okay, head in the back. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is at the work site. He is closing up some MLI or multi layer insulation. This MLI is on the mounting bracket. With Steve Bowen complete on his get-ahead task, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is still working on... Copy two to three turns on C5. You can get your PGT ready. We'll be driving C5 first, and you'll be at a setting of Bravo 7. He is attaching a beam. Copy. And you just say C5, right, Jim? A-Firm, you can start at C5, the bolt that you just hand-started. But I want to tell you, this is important, that the bolts must be stopped on turn count. And since you hand-started this two to three turns, we want 18 turns only. Okay. Um, 18 only on C5, I copy. You ready for me to start those turns? A from your go. Thanks, Jim. Starting turns. And Steve, for you, we have no other get aheads, so you will be just getting in a good position to get the best views possible for the next twenty ish minutes while we get in position for the working eclipse. Sounds good to me. Maybe a first. While NASA astronaut Steve Bowen hangs out at the work site while we are waiting on that eclipse to start, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is securing a beam to the flight support equipment area. Copy 17 turns on C5. He is utilizing a PGT or pistol grip tool to secure those bolts in place. And it felt uh, pretty torquey to me. 
I did not torque out, but I could tell there was significant torque. That sounds good to us. You can stow your PGT and retrieve the adjustable equipment tether. Work. The pistol grip tool is essentially a space drill. It is used to apply torque to those bolts. Okay, Johnny, heading Woody, your settings here for driving C3 are the same. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2 is set. On seven turns, no more. Let's do 18 turns, 1 8. Woody. Okay, 1 8 turns. Sounds good. All right, just because I'm hanging out here, where are we? Steve, Woody is almost finished up at the FSE, and you should be passing. <laughs> you should be passing just over the northwestern edge of Africa right now. Okay, thank you. Good jam, 18 turns on C3. Copy, 18 turns. On C3, that's a good bolt. You can retrieve your adjustable equipment tether, stow it on your mini workstation, and then we'll have you pick up crew lock bag T. I got the adjustable going to get T, thanks. Woody has successfully installed that beam on the flight support equipment area, and he is now headed to retrieve a tool bag. And Woody, your preference here, you can stow those adjustables that you just picked up on the outside of crew lock bag T, and then we will have that on your BRT. You can keep them on your mini workstation if you prefer that. Sure. Um. He also has some adjustable equipment tethers or straps that he is also going to attach to the tool bag he is picking up. I'll keep one and drop one. Copy. You can see a view of that tool bag right now with NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. He just attached one of those equipment tethers to it. And Woody, additional words for you. We would like that wire tie, which is on the tower handrail, to stay with the bag. Copy. Pick up the wire tie. Good words. This is yet another get-ahead task. We are a little over 
20 minutes from our eclipse where we can start mating the cables on the solar array. These solar arrays cannot be powered off, so that's why we have to plug them in during an eclipse so that there is no power running through the solar array when the astronauts go to actually connect those cables. Woody, that was your last action on the FSC. You can stow crew lock bag T on the port suit of cart. Stow T on the port suit of cart. Copy, thanks, Jeff. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now going to move that tool bag over to the cart, and then he will make his way back to the solar array installation station. A good safety to the configure. Stay by one. Take your time. We still have 20 minutes to our working equip start. Jenny, confirm you said port seat of cart? A firm. Okay, thank you. He is heading to the cart on the port side. CETA stands for the Crew and Equipment Translation Aid. That orbital night time is less than 20 minutes away. It occurs when the Earth is shadowing the International Space Station. The International Space Station orbits the Earth every, every 90 minutes. 45 of those are in sunlight and 45 are in dark. This is live helmet camera footage from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. This is his second spacewalk. Today he is installing the solar array on the 1B power channel. On June 9th, he worked with NASA astronaut Steve Bowen to install another solar array at the 1A power channel. The crew exited the airlock this morning. They switched to battery power prior to that with our official spacewalk start time of 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.42 a.m. Central Time. 
copy. Kurloff bag T stowed on the port CETA cart. We're going to take this opportunity before you start translating to do another socket swap um, such that we have the six inch that's currently on your mini workstation on your PGT and the remaining socket, the two inch, should be in your trash bag. Copy that and work. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is going to be doing a socket swap. He needs a different size socket for these upcoming tasks on the solar array. PGT is that pistol grip tool or that drill that he will be using. Socket swap would be good pull test, James. Copy, good pull test on the socket swap. The space station is currently flying 257 statute miles over Nigeria. Would you verify your gauntlets are down? Done. Copy. You are translating back out to S6. On the way, drop your green hook on S5 handrail 2140. That's the same place where you picked it up. The gauntlet is that covering of material just above his glove. 2140. Good words. And we have about 15 minutes until our working eclipse starts. That time of year where it's day is longer than night. That bat is there, not here. <laughs> NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is now heading Woody, back. Stand by. Is now heading back to the workstation for the solar array. So in the other direction. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Oh boy. Do not I worry about it. Oh boy. <laughs> you, you're in great shape. We got plenty of time. It's good practice. Thought I could tag the. Uh, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, well, you're here. It only take another minute or two. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't clear, don't actually do that. We want you going to S6. I'm already headed that way. We see it. I don't need to see the car break yet, do you? No. Okay, great. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is translating the sides of the International Space Station, heading back to the workstation where the International Space Station rollout solar array is awaiting for its cables to be mated during our upcoming solar eclipse starting in about 12 minutes.
Okay, and Jams, just uh, confirming, 2140, I'm expecting that outboard of the Sarge, which I just crossed, got us down. A-firm, it should be on S5, and it's on the second A-frame that you encounter. The mirror you're seeing on his right arm is used for him to be able to look at the controls on his spacesuit. Because he's in the helmet, he can't look down physically, so the astronauts utilize these mirrors in order to see on their chest. Because of that mirror, those controls are backwards on the spacesuit if you were just to look at them straight on. All right, I'm at 2117 on with width 5, now 2128. He is confirming his. You've just passed the first A-frame, the handrail's on the second A-frame. Okay. He is confirming his location to flight control. Team members here in mission control, they know the location of all of these different grab bars for the astronauts to use to get around the International Space Station. Oh, it is, okay, it is right by width 11, got it. A firm, it should be, on the back side. should be near your right hand. As Woody moves from area to area, he relocates his tethers. He has both a safety tether and also an additional local tether. Okay, Jenny Green hooks on 2140. He is confirming where he has placed his tether. Copy, Woody. That's a good config. You can translate outboard to the mod kit. A beautiful view of the Earth below. The space station is currently flying over Angola in Africa. Woody, as you continue your translation outboard, you're a straight shot for this translation, but if you can get eyes on Steve's tether, make sure that it's still fair led around the perimeter of S6. We'd appreciate it. That's in my field of view, and it is. It's fair led. It looks beautiful. So up until it gets to me, i got to do the corner again when you get this. Oh, you want to get that corner again? Gotcha. Well, when, it, when you get me straightened out, because uh, I think it's going around my back. S6 is the starboard six truss. This is where we are installing the solar array today. Copy, Woody, we agree. APFR is the adjustable portable foot restraint. And Articulating foot restraint. Rich man fair lead for your tether as well, if you need to keep it clear. Um, the APFR does essentially the same thing, if you guys are good with that. Copy, Woody, we're fine with that. Okay. Thanks so much. And you can see NASA astronaut Steve Bowen coming into view on NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg's helmet cam. my... My safety tether, my deep rating extender is up where I expected it to be. Okay, coming in to take a look. Going low. Uh, I'm 
get a call if you need. There are a couple of cables that the crew can work on pre-eclipse. They are the J cables. You will hear call-outs for those coming up. Absolutely. And we are about six minutes out from that working eclipse. Just put it on the corner. Come in. Let you do it just to keep our... Uh, yeah, that we won't come up again. Yeah. Woody and Steve, now that we are both in position at the market, I have big picture words for both of you. Sounds great, James. We are six minutes from our working eclipse time and six minutes from a data LOS. We'll have voice for all but the last two minutes of that eight-minute data LOS. Depending where we are in the procedure, we'll treat that potentially like a handover. If not, I'll be very clear if I'm handing off to Frank. We will, before we go LOS for data, do our best to confirm safing from the ground, but if we need to, we'll loop in onboard IV to do that for us. Copy, Jan, great overview. And I copy you as well. All right, so with that, we can have Woody translate to the right blanket box, and Steve, you can get in position to the left blanket box. We will have you demate the new cable wing tab connectors, which are on the mid strut, from one another. They are going to be unconnecting these first sets of cables. Words also from Mission Control Houston that even with our upcoming expected loss of signal, the team is still going to be working. You should see P7 Alpha and J7 Alpha and P21 Alpha, J21 Alpha. On board, they have NASA astronaut Frank Rubio as their support. I do. I see J7 Alpha and T7. And where's the other connector? There it is. Copy, Steve. You have the right connectors. Woody, you should have. And Jams, I'm demating. Right. Go ahead. P9 Alpha, J9 Alpha, and P23 Alpha, J23 Alpha. That's what I've got. You can see the lighting begin to change as we head into that eclipse. We are about three minutes away from that orbital nighttime. This is the eighth spacewalk out of the International Space Station this year in support of its assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. And this is the sixth International Space Station rollout solar array to be installed on the station. On June 9th, the team worked to in this exact team worked to install the solar array on the opposite side of the station. The solar array installed on June 9th and the one being installed today were delivered on the SpaceX Cargo Resupply Service Mission number 28 on June 5th. Uh, 
Hi, Jenny. My cable did you made it and I'm in position. Copy, Woody. All right, I'm still working on it. Got to get that wire tied up. Copy, Steve. And James, I've got a red to that cap that we're going to be demating eventually. Copy, okay, Woody. My cables are disconnected. To make some sliding movement here, get some clearance on the panel connectors. Okay. Give it a beacon three. Copy. We are about a minute from our eight-minute data LOS. Again, we have voice in all but the last two minutes. I'm Prime IV, and we have just over a minute to our working Eclipse start. Warning, you must not demate saw connectors until Eclipse plus two minutes. I'll tell you when that is. And you must maintain a one-foot keep-out zone from any demated connectors starting two minutes prior to and during installation. We should not be in that situation, but again, I will give you warning if we are. Copy, James. Copy. We are waiting for our working eclipse to start in about 30 seconds and then safing. So stand by. These cables you are seeing on your screen are ones that cannot be mated until we are in that working eclipse. Again, this is a safety measure to give the all the arrays enough time to discharge power while the astronauts are handling electrical cables. Just as we've entered that working eclipse, our video data stream is being handed over to satellites, but we do still have audio connection with the astronauts outside. Brandon Lloyd is the flight director here in the room. He had the final call on all of these work ahead items that the astronauts completed today because they have been so efficient and working ahead of schedule. Today's EVA or spacewalk is one day shy of the two year anniversary of the first IROSA or International Space Station rollout solar array. That first installation was on June 16th of 2021. And here we are about two years later, completing that sixth solar array installation. With this spacewalk, we will have installed six International Space Station rollout solar arrays onto the space station. We are expecting a 30% increase in power output. These new solar arrays are rolled out in front of the legacy arrays, but the legacy arrays will continue to produce power as well.
Each of the new arrays are about half the size, but thanks to advances in technology, they are much more powerful. This new setup with IROSA and the legacy arrays will increase that power production capabilities to a combined total of more than 250 kilowatts. For comparison, the average American home uses around 2 kilowatts at any given time, and the space station currently consumes about 75 to 90 kilowatts. This is the sixth International Space Station rollout solar array to be installed. However, NASA and Boeing have a plan in place for a fourth set of rollout arrays to further augment the International Space Station's power supply. These arrays, which would be the seventh and eighth to be installed on the space station, are targeted to be delivered in the 2025 timeframe. So until then, the space station will be running with these six IROSA combined with those legacy solar arrays. A recap of where we are at in the spacewalk during this expected loss of signal as our data is transferred between satellites. Our spacewalk started this morning at 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.42 a.m. Central Time. NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen exited the airlock. They released the solar array from its flight support equipment area and relocated it to its current work site at the 1B power supply. This is on the Starboard 6 truss. On board Emirati Space Agency, astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi controlled a robotic arm that carried NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and the IROSA over to the starboard six truss area. The robotic arm was not long enough to reach exactly where they needed to be, so together NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen conducted a leapfrog maneuver passing the solar array between themselves to reach its final work site. The team worked very efficiently and was ahead of schedule, so the flight control team here that you are seeing a live view of made the decision for the team to conduct some work ahead cleanup activities that were on their schedule to be done after the solar array installation. With a couple of those items completed, then we have entered into our orbital nighttime where the astronauts are now able to safely mate the cables and connect the solar array to the space station's power supply. Houston's back with you on one. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Woody, we'll take a status from you. <laughs> we are standing by, awaiting further instructions. All right. We have not started. All right, copy, no problem. We have plenty of time left in our working eclipse. We have just over 20 minutes. That was an unexpected voice LOS. The team's looking into it. In the meantime, I can confirm safing is in place, so let's get started. 
Woody, you can either start with the cap to P23 or the saw cable P9. We need one of those disconnected from the panel. Let me know what you choose from. And likewise, for Steve, we're looking at P7 or P21. Yeah, P7 didn't work for Steve. Saw cable P9 demated. Copy, Woody, P9 demated from panel P9. Each of the cables have different Connect numbers. Zero. Connect P9 alpha to panel P9. I'll take your checks. P9 alpha. The spacewalk communicator here in Mission Control Houston is instructing the astronauts on which cable to attach where in the panel. Jenny Seide Gibbons is the She's there in the black shirt. She is She is also a Canadian Space Agency astronaut. To connect her hard stop. Together she is working with Spacewalk Spacewalk officers. Copy Woody. Mate J9 Alpha to saw cable P9. Who are tracking their procedures? J9 Alpha to saw cable P9. I'll take your checks. Megan Shutika is the lead spacewalk officer today, and Miranda Nelson is the spacewalk task officer. However, it is Jenny who is the one who is communicating directly with the crew, and that is the voice that you hear. Brandon Lloyd is the flight director. As in the Apollo days, the flight director has the utmost authority and responsibility for the success of the mission and the safety of the astronauts. What do you are go? Wing captain at your hard stop. Copy. The astronauts are working through mating those cables during our orbital nighttime. And Steve. I heard a good connection, P7 Alpha to panel P7. Is that correct? We should be getting video views back in about six minutes. Copy, Steve. And that's to connect our hard stop. You can now make P7 Alpha to panel P7 if not done already. Right, working the panel. And Jenny, I'm ready to move my cap. A firm, disconnect the wing tap connector cap from panel P23. You will be putting that connector cap on J23 Alpha. Okay, it's disconnected. Moving it to J23 Alpha. A firm, and I'll take checks on J23 Alpha. Okay. Twenty three alpha, no five, no bent pins, and there's no EMI band on that side. Yes. Yes. The uh, top jams has a small rubber, black rubber insert that kind of came dislodged when I pulled the cap off. I pushed it back into the cap. I think it's in a good config for me to make. Hey, firm Woody, you are go. Okay, caps to hard stop. All right, P7, J7 to J7 Alpha to the panel is complete. There's a good EMI band, well, good pins, and it's all the way to hard stop. Copy, P7 Alpha made it to panel P7. Steve, you can move on to disconnecting, disconnecting saw cable P21 from panel P21. SAW stands for Solar Array Wing. P23 Alpha to panel P23. These are the cables on the Solar Array. P21, connected from the panel. 
So far, good things. And look at me, give me my bed. Copy, Steve. You can mate J21 Alpha to saw cable P21. Didn't work. And on P23 Alpha, no FOD, no bed pins. Good idea, my band. Copy, Woody. And wind top connector, hard stop on channel 23. Copy. And I'll check all four wing tabs on the panel. Hard stop. Copy. I'm tracking that that is your last connection, Woody. All connectors are to hard stop. You can clean up any remaining cable slack as required. Work. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg has completed connecting all of his cables. The P21 is complete. Work in the pen. Copy J21 Alpha made it made it to saw cable P21. Good checks and to connector hard stop. Jen you can move on to connecting P21 Alpha to panel P21. Jenny Gibbons is following along a very detailed set of procedures for all of these tasks. She is speaking with the flight director right now. Woody, you can translate to the ISS inboard side of the mod kit. And when you're ready, we'll take a glove inspection, half check, and gauntlet check. Copy all jams. Just clean it up one bit, and then I'll, that'll be in work. Copy. With those cables successfully mated. We'll get the wire tie off of the connector here. Correction, we are waiting on one more cable from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. On the middle strut. Uh, now it's free. All right, the good pins, be my bed, no fog. Your go to mate, Steve. Steve Bowen is working on his final cable while Woody Hoberg is translating to the next area of the work site. I've got P21 Alpha to P to the panel. Do the hard stop. That looks like a good mate. Copy, Steve. I am tracking that that is your last connector and the last connector that we need to complete during this eclipse. So well done, both of you. We still have 13 minutes of that working eclipse. You both did great. See if you can clean up the remaining slack in the cable as required. Yep. We get my stuff disentangled from it. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen will now tidy up any additional cable slack. And in terms of my gloves, no change and a dry hat. Don't let you down. Copy, Woody, good checks, and for you both, we just got video back. Welcome back. And we have our live video views back after we translated our data stream to 
in between satellites as the International Space Station orbits the Earth. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg just conducted a glove helmet and excuse me, a glove gauntlet and HAP check. HAP is a helmet absorption pad. This is in the back of the helmet. The crew uses this to determine if there's any excess water in their helmet. All things looked good for Woody, and he is now. Steve, with that, I'll take a glove inspection, half check, and gauntlet check from you as well. All right, let me get out to the. Stand by one, Steve. We'll have you. Okay. Steve, we'll have you stay uh, in this position for now. Okay, back. Basically, your next step is to get in a good position for viewing IROSA deploy. So where, okay. wherever you think is best, it could be where you currently are, it could be on the mass canister handrail, it could be back on S6. We'll let you decide. I understand now. Okay, let me look. Uh, more than a few short bit there. Um, okay. Let me get down to a little settle so they have a location, I think. Copy. And we have, again, lots of time here, 10 more minutes of our working eclipse, and we need a check in insulation prior to deploy. So we have at least 10 minutes to get ready. And Steve, we might, let's send you back to the blanket box to check that all the connectors are mated to hard stop. We are unaware of whether we might have bumped one out of position. If you already checked them, right. if you already checked them, you could just let us know and that's fine for us. I did, but I'll go back and check. We got time. We just didn't have video at the time, no, Steve. Look. No, it looked like there was a hard stop, including the ones that were already mated. Mission control team is asking for a video visual on those cables. Great config, Steve. Thank you for triple checking for us. On those cables, just to make sure that everything looks good, being that we did not have video views during that mating process. This is the helmet cam from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He is going to get in a good position to view the rollout of the solar array. He is looking at his teammate today, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. Woody Hoberg has the red stripe on his spacesuit today. He is EV-1 and Steve is EV-2. Once that solar array does start to unroll, it will take a, about 12 minutes for it to fully unfurl. Okay, Kenny, do you have video? How does that look? We do have video, and that looks great, Steve. Thank you. Okay, I'll see if I can make myself stable here then. Sounds good to us. When you're ready, I need a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check. Right, 
Let's have it dry. Don't let the floor down. You can see NASA astronaut Steve Bowen conducting his glove check. And left glove is good. He is inspecting it for any unexpected damage. Everything looks good. Woody and Steve, we're still waiting for a Spartan check down here. In the meantime, one warning for you, prior to releasing the deployment launch restraint bolts, stay clear of the deploying Agroza blankets. In your current position, you will both be clear. Okay, thanks, Jeff. And I copy as well. A little bit ago, you heard the call out for Spartan. That is a console position here in Mission Control Houston. Spartan stands for Station Power, Articulation, Thermal, and Analysis. They manage the external cooling system as well as power generation and distribution for the space station. Spartan will be monitoring the power generated by the array once it is being rolled out. The astronaut. the astronauts have completed their tasks that were needed to mate the new cables during this working eclipse. They are waiting until orbital sunrise to actually un start unfurling the solar array. We are expecting that to happen in about five minutes. Here is a graphic showing the location of where the astronauts are right now. They are on this IROSA or International Space Station Rollout Solar Array 1B. On June 9th, this same duo, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, installed and rolled out successfully the solar array on the 1A power channel. Woody and Steve, we're still waiting for another three to four minutes until we're in insulation, but I have an updated PET for you. We are four hours into a seven hour, 30 minute EVA with the limiting consumable being Woody's battery. Following our deploy steps, we have about 15 minutes of cleanup, which is faster than you were expecting um, based on your study time because of the get aheads we did earlier and the team is reassessing what we will be doing after that. Thanks, Jeff. Copy. For your information, we are also looking into why our SHA-SS COM pass didn't allow us to speak to you during that data LOS, um, made it into a full LOS for us. 
for your awareness, we have another one of those coming up where we should have shot SS, but we're going to try and address the problem before then. We might be handing over to Frank for that time if we need to. Please, thanks, Jim. Mission control team confirming that that expected loss of signal of video extended. We don't worry about that potential LOS for a while. That's over an hour away. Extended momentarily to unexpected also on the voice side. Our next plan loss of signal coming up in about an hour. The team should have voice with the astronauts for the majority of that loss of signal. We just won't have video views. We are just over four hours into today's spacewalk, and the crew has already worked ahead on additional tasks that were planned. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen, this is his 10th spacewalk today. And it is Woody Hoberg's second spacewalk. They launched together as part of the NASA Crew-6 mission. They arrived to the space station on March 3rd of 2023. For Bowen, after today being his 10th spacewalk, it will tie him for the most spacewalks by a U.S. astronaut. He will be then tied with Mike Lopez, Alegria, Bob Benkin, Peggy Whitson, and Chris Cassidy. Woody and Steve, we're headed into insulation. Spartan will do their check shortly. Great. And James, I'm going to have Alpha 1 counter 2 set. We are heading into that orbital sunrise. You should be in position for R9 and R10. Your settings are Bravo 7, counter 2. I fault. All right, Bravo 7, counter 2, concur. Got it. Good feedback. Next up, they will release the launch restraint bolts, which will allow the solar array to unroll.
NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg working on those launch restraints bolt launch restraint bolts to release those. And this live view from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's helmet camera. He is he has positioned himself to have a good view of that solar array unfurling. His next job is to observe these first set of magnets, make sure that they snap together during that initial deployment. There are magnets along the rim of the solar array that actually aids with helping it to unfurl. The team is waiting for a go from from Spartan. All right, Woody and Steve, we have the check that we need. So with that, we are go for deploy. Steve, you stay in position. Woody, you can release R9 and R10. The white line will appear when the bolts are fully released. Expect 17 to 20 turns each. Okay, Tony, I copy R9, R10, Bravo 7, counter 2 set. Starting turns on R9. Good words. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is utilizing his pistol grip tool or his spacewalk drill to loosen those restraint bolts. Any bolt popped out at one six turns. I see the white line visible. Copy white line visible at one six sixteen turns on R9. Go for R10. For our time, starting turns. This is the final bolt that needs to be released. turns on R10, going to wiggle it. Copy your go. And not, not coming out like the last one with a wiggle. I give it a few more turns, James. Stand by one, Woody. That's got to hit the wiggle. It'll oh. work later. Copy, we see it. Well done. 
And with those restraint bolts released, you can see the solar array begin to unroll. It is aided by those magnets that snap together. This is the helmet camera view from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. It will take about 12 minutes for the solar array to completely unfurl. A beautiful view with the Earth below. The International Space Station is approaching the coast of Hawaii. The five magnets on uh, my side are faded. Copy, Steve. We see that in your HECA as well. Thank you. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen confirming that he sees those magnets have properly engaged with another confirmation from the flight control team here in Houston. He is going to remain in that position to keep a good visual on the solar array as it rolls out. About two years from the first IROSA, first IROSA unrolling is the sixth IROSA unrolling. Again, that first IROSA or Inter International Space Station rollout solar array was installed on June 16th of 2021. There's some uh, white rectangles that pop out uh, in the center of IROSA as it's falling out, and it looks like maybe the fifth one up, the right-hand side one, uh, did not fully pop over. Should be able to see it in my HECA. Copy, Woody. We are getting right out to the middle of Irosa. We are getting eyes on that. We appreciate the report. Would you be able to get a picture on your camera as well? Of course. Thank you. Woody and Steve, we're about halfway through deploy. We'll let you know when we can get moving again after deploy is complete. After the solar array is deployed, the team will then proceed to tension it or make it be pulled tight.
You can see the view here of a size comparison between the new solar array with the legacy array. When unrolled, the International Space Station rollout solar array, the new one, will be 60 feet long by 20 feet wide, and the legacy ones are 112 feet long and 39 feet wide. To the left is the SSRMS, or the Space Station Remote Manipulator System, also known as the Canada Arm 2. It is a contribution from the Canadian Space Agency. It helps move supplies, equipment, and even astronauts during spacewalks like the one today. It is over 57 feet long when it is fully extended. All right, Woody and Steve, we have about two minutes left of deploy, and I have big picture words ready for both of you. Okay, hey, ready to copy. Woody, you will be completing the tensioner bolt release, and then doing work site cleanup, pretty much as written in the procedure, we'll have you get crew lock bag M, and then you'll be translating inboard, picking up your green hook along the way, and then working with SSRMS to retrieve the APFR. Following that, we'll have more information. Steve, you ready? I'm ready to copy. Steve, for you, following deploy, you are gonna pick up the cable bag and put it on your BRT. You'll translate inboard, picking up your green hook on the way, and then we will have you at the CETA cart bundling that bag to crew lock bag T. BRT stands for Body Restraint Tether. Close to it, we'll have words on get aheads. Good. 
the six International Space Station Solar Array is completing. Maybe I didn't notice it on the last deploy, but as we got to the end there, I noticed what looked like, it looked similar to me to what I saw when tensioning occurred yeah. on the last one. And a little pop. Magnets on your side weren't perfectly lined up before, but they are now. Copy. And we think that that pop is normal. Copy. Great. Okay, with that, deploy is complete. So well done, both of you. Um, Steve, you can translate to retrieve the cable bag. And Woody, sudden stops and quick grabs are still not allowed on the mod kit. And now you have a 25 foot-pound max lateral load on the mod kit less than before now that we have deployed. You can get in position for the tensioner bolts. Copy, Jenny. Nat NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg will be releasing those tensioner bolts. That is going to pull the solar array tight. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is going to start with some cleanup activities. And Woody and Steve, can either of you confirm that the magnets on the other side that Steve was not looking at have snapped together successfully? They have. I can see them from here. All the magnets. Uh, the first five I can see clearly. The rest I watched at the end, they all snapped right into place at the very end. That was part of what that uh, mentioning that Woody just mentioned was. All right, thank you. We'll take that. That check is good for us. Uh, Steve, again, you're headed to the cable bag. All right, going to cable bag. And Jenny, I have Alpha 1, Counter 2 set, R11. Good settings. You will be releasing these five to six turns. A white line will be visible when released. Copy, starting turns. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is turning those tensioner bolts. You can see movement on the solar array as it is pulled tight. Steve, repeat your last. Passing several cable clamps that are, that are undone. And I could, that's, the cables are fine. Okay, Steve, we copy. You can close those if you want, but it's not required. Okay. As NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is translating to his new location, he saw some open, open cable ties. The mission control team in Houston confirmed that he can close them, but it's just optional. Jenny, you're back. Back with you, Woody. Okay, I waited for you guys for our 12, but I'm ready to start turns. Here you go. Okay, Jenny, I saw the pop on the array at, at three turns. That was similar to what I saw on R11. I continued the bolt to your minimum five turns, and I have a white band visible. 
Copy. The pop happened after three turns, but you got a total of five. You see the white line. All right, Woody, those are good bolts. You can verify that all the MLI on the mod kit is in place. No metal should be showing from the struts or collar bolts. Good, looking. Mission Control Team confirming that everything looks good on the rolled out solar array that has now been pulled tight thanks to tensioner bolts. Okay, Jenny, I have a uh, field back to my BRT on a rep. And I'm picking it up. Copy, Steve. You have the cable bag on your BRT. You will be releasing it from structure and translating inboard, picking up your green hook on the way. And NASA astronaut Steve Bowen confirming that he has the tool bag on his body restraint tether. Here you can and see a view of that. Uh, we have one additional step before you head to the crew lock bag. We're interested in why that part of um, the center of IROSA that you reported didn't deploy nominally. And we're wondering if you can get us a view on the outboard side it would be the back from your perspective previously of that portion of the array. We understand that's really challenging because you're on S6, but we'll take your best effort. Okay, I'll see if I can do it. Um, Jenny, do you have in my HECA this uh, piece of MOI? We to put a wire tie on that or? Checking. There's no metal exposed. All right, Woody, if no metal is showing, you can leave it as is. Thank you. Okay, copy that. I will try to get that view now. We appreciate it. And if you are able to get a view, we'd also like a photo, please. Gotcha. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is attempting to get a visual and a photo of area during deploy that teams believe may have been abnormal. I think what we're dealing with is on the back side of the array, there are some yellow foam strips. And it looks like that white rectangle is just caught on the edge of one of the yellow foam strips. All right, we see it in your HECA. Thank you so much, Woody. Okay, I'll get you some photos. HECA is the helmet cam. That is the live view you are seeing right now. We see you pulling out your camera, and we appreciate it. We will take some photos of that. Thank you, Woody. Of course, no problem. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is taking a photo for engineering analysis, but this issue is not expected to impact the performance of the solar array.
Okay, I think I got some good shots, Jams. Great, thank you, Woody. We appreciate it. Your next step is to release the scoop from the mounting bracket with the adjustable equipment tethers on it, and you'll be stowing that in the crew lock bag. Happy. Thank you much reservation in board. Copy and concur, Steve. Here you can see that tool bag. He is putting the scoop inside of the tool bag. And the scoop is a handling aid. Copy, Steve. Let us know when you're on the port seat of cart. We are just over four and a half hours. We are at four hours and 33 minutes into the 265th spacewalk out of the International Space Station in support of its assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen began the spacewalk this morning at 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.42 a.m. Central Time. After they exited the airlock, they released the solar array from its flight support equipment area. They then relocated it to the starboard truss at the 1B power supply. The team transported the solar array with the robotic arm called the Canada 2 arm. Woody Hoberg flew on that robotic arm with the solar array and then passed it off to Steve Bowen in a leapfrog maneuver to get it to its workstation. During, during that time, the team worked very efficiently and was well ahead of schedule, so the flight control team here in Houston made the decision for them to go ahead and work ahead on some items in the timeline while they waited for a eclipse and orbital nighttime. That orbital nighttime was necessary as a safety measure in order to make sure there was no power, no sun reaching that solar array when they went to actually connect it to the space station. 
we successfully reached our orbital nighttime and the team mated the solar array with the space station's power systems. After that, it successfully unfurled the and the flight control team is happy with the deployment of the solar array. The team is still well ahead of schedule and is now completing their additional cleanup activities. Because the astronauts are still ahead of schedule, the flight control team here in Houston is evaluating yet another potential work ahead for the team. They are both currently headed to the port CETA cart. CETA stands for the Crew and Equipment Translation Aid. This is a cart and it is on the port side of the space station. Woody, once you have the crew lock bag on your BRT, your next step is to translate back inboard, but this is obviously the last time we will be at this work site today, so we want you to do a sanity check and a scan. Looks like you've been looking around anyway. Make sure we haven't forgotten anything. All right, sounds good, Jenny. Just stand by one. He is connecting that tool bag to his BRT or body restraint tether. The mission control team asked for one final visual of this workstation before they leave it for the day after a successful solar array deploy. All right, looking around. Inside connectors are mated, MOI looks good. Nice deployed Irosa. Got the crew light bag key with me, and I'm leaving the APFR, Jenny, and with 31. A firm, that's right. And you should have crew lock bag M, but otherwise correct. Thank you. Correction, yes. Crew lock bag M is on my BRT. Perfect, Woody. Wonderful job. You can clean up any sort of fair lead you might have out there because your next step is to translate inboard and pick up your green hook. I'll do that. Thanks. All right, I have the cable bag. It is with the tea bag. And so do I here too. Copy, Steve. We'll have you hold at the port CETA cart for now. I will take a glove inspection and a hat check from you. All right, let me get comfy. That's a good hat to try. Copy your check, Steve.
NASA astronaut Steve Bowen just conducted a routine glove gauntlet and HAP check. HAP is the helmet absorption pad. This is a pad that's in the back of their helmet. They test to see if it's squishy or wet or has any water. Everything is good for NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. The crew has been conducting these checks throughout the spacewalk. We are currently at four hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk and well ahead of schedule. Steve Bowen is waiting at that cart location for Woody Hoberg to join him shortly. Copy, Woody. Continue your translation inboard. Once you are on the inboard side of the starboard seat of cart, we'll have you tap the brake pedals twice. Yeah. I have big picture words for both of you. Steve, you're stationary. Woody, you ready? Yep, ready to copy, Jerry. All right, I just want to check in with you before we go further. We are four hours and 40 minutes or so into this EVA. You two have done a phenomenal job. You've already deployed IROSA. And our next steps really would be to sync up and then get after some get-aheads. Mainly, Steve, we would be sending you to the Z1 tool boxes in order to retrieve that Canon connector tool. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. I've been there before. Hopefully, I don't pull a, butt, a whole lot. We'll try that. Be good. I think it's in the door, actually. So. Oh, even better. Yeah. We think that's a yes. And is yes, that a yes? And Jenny, <laughs> I, I'm doing great as well. So. Happy to keep going. Okay, great. Anything we're, you guys need. We're really glad to hear it again. You two have done a wonderful job. All right, so again, reminder, your next step, just because I see you're coming up to those CETA carts, Woody will take a double tap on the inboard side of the starboard CETA cart before you head under the MT, and then you'll sync up with Steve on the port CETA cart. You'll need to be further inboard than Steve in order to make our tether routing work. So once you get there, just make sure your tethers are deconflicted, and then you will actually pass Steve and continue your translation inboard. All right, got it. And Jenny, do we want to uh, clean up the tether this thing and get it back to the airlock as the staging, or uh, we'll just deal with that later? And Steve, we're going to be cleaning that up on our way back. We have more details for you soon. Okay. And yet another... Harvard Cedar card. Inboard Copy, what do you think, you? And yet another work ahead task for the EVA 88 crew members. Mission control team asked them if they were up for it, and they pulled yes. Let me get up above you, Woody. Yeah, let me take a look at the tether situation. Okay, so. Yeah. Steve, that's a great spot. Thanks. Yep. Woody, you are headed to the SSRMS cleanup position, which is at mile marker 6870. 6870. Good words. Thank you, Jenny. The SSRMS stands for the Space Station Remote Manipulator System. That is the robotic arm that has been used on today's spacewalk to transport both Woody and the IROSA to its workstation. All right, Steve, tethers look really good thanks to your excellent position there. All right. Thanks for getting by me. I'm getting there. Do you want this seat of car brake as well, James? I'll get it. No. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Steve's the last one to leave that seat of cart, so you can just continue. Steve will get it later. Okay, Steve, uh, one sec. You're just make sure I'm well clear of your tether. Yeah, I'm watching it. That's the way it leads. It'll clear here. Stand by. There we go. Oh, 
obviously has flight cross right here where they're anchored, but that should not be a factor. Yes, I'll sit over that. Okay. He's been following along and agrees. All right, Woody is in a good position, clear of you, Steve, so you can translate to the anchor hooks and we'll get you to double tap the inboard port CETA cart brake pedal twice on your way. Alright, second filtron, are you guys ready for a GCA? They're published. Absolutely, we are ready uh, for bringing the arm for the APFR removal position, and we are expecting station aft about 1 meter 70 centimeters. That sounds perfect, filtron. Go for station aft. Alright, start in motion. Copy. And Jenny, I double tap the starboard. Peter Kirkbridge. Okay, the port, yeah. Copy, Steve. Audio good motion. Curse all time, good motion. One meter to go. Continue. Copy, continue. Half a meter to go. Continue. I'll be continue. Twenty to go. Okay, you can hold position there. Yeah, hold position. What time? That looks great. GCA complete. Copy. GCA complete. Brakes are coming on, and you are go for a PFR removal. Copy, go, thanks. Woody, you'll be bundling crew lock bag M to the APFR and then stowing that bundle on your BRT. Copy, Jenny, thanks. Steve and Woody, I have those big picture tether words when you're ready. Very happy. All right, so right now Woody's retrieving the APFR from the arm. Steve, you're going to stay at the anchor hooks, and Woody's going to translate back to the airlock, establish a good load path to the airlock, and Steve, I will talk you through picking up the anchor hooks. You'll head back to the airlock as well, and then establish your anchor hooks on the forward and aft external D-rings, so we will no longer be in a slingshot configuration. Your anchor hooks will be back at the airlock. And then, Steve, I'll send you to Z1 for the toolboxes, 
and Woody, you'll be going to ESP2 to drop off the APFR. Okay, copy all, Jim. Two different tasks coming up. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is going to take charge on another work ahead item. He will be heading to a toolbox to retrieve a connector tool for use on a future spacewalk. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is going to be repositioning a foot restraint. Okay, Jenny, ready to continue down to the airlock. Copy. You can give Frank and Sultan a go to maneuver to the SSRMS park position and continue your translation. Okay, let me just get on the other side here and then I'll give them that go. Frank, Sultan, your go for park. We copy, the bridge already off, and we are moving the arm right now. Copy, go. Woody, once you're at the airlock, you'll be stowing the crew lock bag there, and you can connect a waist tether uh, to the airlock internal D-ring. Okay, um, airlock internal D-ring. Does the airlock D-ring extender work well, Jim? Hey, friend. Do we want something else? Nope, that's fine. We just need okay, a good load pass to the airlock. Got that tether. Got it. Remember, we have that waste tether already stationed there, so we can do this pretty easily. Uh, yeah, I copy Steve, but I'm continuing later. Yeah, that's true. Steve, our arms in motion. Now we need to go. Steve, I can talk you through picking up the anchor hooks when the time is right. Not yet, but you can you can start by reading to Woody's anchor hook, which is on the zenith handrail, three two four seven. Two four seven zenith handrail. The robotic arm is in motion. It is being operated by fellow crew members inside Emirati Space Agency astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio. Meanwhile, back at the airlock, you just saw the thermal cover being opened, and that is inside the Quest airlock. This is the crew lock portion of the airlock.
This is live views from the helmet camera on Woody Hoberg's spacesuit. Right waist cutter, gate closed, locked, black on black to the airlock D ring extender. And I've double checked that small hook, also gate closed, locked, black on black to my right D ring extender. Copy, Woody. That's a good load pass to the airlock. So you can give Steve a go to put your anchor hook on his red wheel. Steve, you have a go. All right. I've got a red there, Woody's anchor hook. Getting his anchor hook going to the my red reel. Good words. Alright, get close by the lock. What do you think, Hook? It's to my red veal. Veal is unlocked. Copy, Steve. That is a good config. You now have a good load path back to the airlock. You can retrieve your anchor hook from handrail 3246 and stow it on your mini workstation. Three, two, four, six. My hook coming off the entire middle extension. Right, that's complete. Copy, Take Steve. The rest back off. Copy. You can translate to the airlock. Airlock bag and stowed in the airlock. Copy, Woody. The tool bag is successfully inside of the airlock. The astronauts will be taking that back inside with them today. Woody, when you're ready, I'll take a glove inspection and half check. All right, starting my translation back. He is performing another routine inspection of his gloves, the piece of fabric that is just above the gloves called the gauntlet, and then that helmet absorption pad located inside of his helmet. Woody and Steve, we're working on our comm configuration for the next data LOS. I'm going to perform a comm check on SHA SF now. Copy, Jim. Copy, Jim. That was for Jams loud and clear, help me. Jams loud and clear, help me. Do you have any loud and clear? Okay. And we do have an echo. And we do have an echo. <laughs> <laughs> Copy. And NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is confirmed to do that work ahead item of retrieving that tool from a toolbox. This is live video views from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's helmet camera as he works to retrieve that tool. Right. 
We are in an expected loss of signal right now. You can see NASA astronaut Steve Bowen released that tether and he is now going inside of the airlock. And Jenny, confirm I'm headed out to EST2 with the APFR. This is Jenny, this is Copy, starboard edge, forward side. Steve, our tethers look clear, I'm heading out. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, get the bags off the DOT. We are in an expected loss of signal for our video views, but the team does still have audio connection with the crew. This is live views of Mission Control Houston, where the team is awaiting updates on NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's work ahead task to retrieve a tool from a toolbox.
Jenny, I'm at with four. Okay, I'm at with five. I see it right now. <laughs> NASA astronaut. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is making his way to the toolbox with navigational help from Mission Control here in Houston. And with our expected loss of signal, clocking six, blocking caller, black on black, good pull twist test. Pitch not block, can be depressed. Current setting six, papa papa, box six. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is installing that foot restraint system in a new area and is calling out that status to the mission control team. Steve, did you copy that? Nope, I did not hear you. My location is on top of the Kulak. Translation and I am at the IAPFR and Divers Ingress. Confirmation from Mission Control Team that NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is good to remain in the 
airlock with the thermal cover closed while NASA astronaut Steve Bowen completes this final work ahead task of retrieving that tool from the Z1 toolbox. And Jenny, uh, confirm you're good with the ABS IR install. Okay, there we go, in work. We are now in an expected loss of signal for both video and audio feeds. We'll take this time to recap where we are in today's spacewalk, EVA-88, with NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen. Today's spacewalking team is NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. For Hoberg, this is his second spacewalk, and for Bowen, this is his tenth spacewalk. He is now tied for the most spacewalks. This is uh, Steve Bowen. He is now tied for the most spacewalks by a U.S. astronaut. He is now tied with Mike Lopez, Alegria, Bob Benkin, Peggy Whitson, and Chris Cassidy. This duo here also installed another IROSA on June 9th. Today's spacewalk is the 265th spacewalk aboard the International Space Station in support of its assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It's the eighth space station spacewalk in 2023 and the sixth for the Expedition 69 crew members. We are just over five hours in our spacewalk, just at five hours and 13 minutes. We began this morning at 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.42 a.m. Central Time. That marked the moment where astronauts Woody Hoberg and Steve Bowen switched on to battery power. This is the sixth solar array to be successfully installed, the new solar array to be sex successfully installed aboard the space station. Timeline of events today after the astronauts exited the airlock, they proceeded to the flight support equipment area. This was the area where the solar arrays were delivered to. They arrived to the space station on the SpaceX Commercial Resupply Service Mission Number 28. That was on June 5th. They re today, the astronauts released the solar array from that flight support equipment area, and then NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg took hand of it He attached himself to the robotic arm and had the solar array in hand. 
Inside the International Space Station was Emirati Space Agency astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi. He actually controlled the robotic arm and moved NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg with the solar array close to its workstation at the 1B power supply on the starboard six truss of the space station. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen met him there, and they used a leapfrog maneuver of passing the solar array between each other to get it to that final spot. From there, the team released hinge bolts and installed it on the mounting bracket. The team made excellent time, and it was decided by the flight control team here in Houston for them to go ahead and proceed with some work ahead tasks that were already planned in the timeline. They did this while they were waiting for a orbital night time in order to make sure that there was no power flowing to the solar array when they connected it to the station. Uh, welcome back, Kenny. Okay, Kenny, I've got two standing connected tools. Is there a preference? We only need one of those two connectors, cable connector tools, Canon connector tools, excuse me, and there is no preference on which one you take. Okay. I took relief. It's been ready to my workstation by our rep. And I'm closing the doors again. Copy. The team successfully connected the new solar array to the space station and then successfully deployed it with the mission control team happy with the array's deployment. After cleaning up their work site, there was then time for yet an additional work ahead task. Steve. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is currently completing that task. It was to retrieve a tool from a toolbox. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is waiting in the airlock. Waiting inside the airlock. Copy, Steve. Correction, he is not inside, he is beside it. Steve, can you verify you closed at least one of those door latches? Both closed. Copy. Both latches. That's great. Thank you, Steve. You can translate back to the airlock. And with confirming that that toolbox is secure, NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is on his way back to the airlock to meet NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. It is dark out right now because we are in an orbital nighttime. The International Space Station orbits the Earth every 90 minutes, providing the crew with 45 minutes of daytime and 45 minutes of nighttime. Together they see about 16 sunsets and sunrises each day.
retrieving this tool is the final task on today's spacewalk. Once NASA astronaut Steve Bowen returns back to the airlock, the team will ingress back into the space station. Back. Come back, Steve. Steve, you can ingress the airlock and hook up a waist tether right. to the airlock internal D-ring or extender. Steve, I've already got that double uh, waist tether down for myself. Excellent. And your waist tether is your extender. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is back inside the airlock. He is tethering himself to it. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg is following shortly. He will also close the hatch thermal cover behind him. Copy, Steve. We're going to be using that as our primary load pass to clean up our tethers outside. This is different than the way the procedure was written because we've done a reconfig. Steve, well, once you have, you have confirmed that you have a good load pass to the airlock, so Woody, my next steps are for you. Okay, Johnny, ready to copy. Woody, you can attach the anchor hook on the forward D-ring and attach it to your waist tether. Okay, so Steve, you're safe, right? I am safe. All right, picking up your anchor hook. A firm. Okay, Jenny, I'm sending the airlock waist tether back inside on my right waist tether. I have Steve's anchor hook, those locked black on black, both hooks. All right, Woody, that is a good load pass to Steve and to the airlock, so you can take your anchor hook, which is on the aft external D-ring, and stow it on your mini workstation. All right, uh, Jenny, I concur. It works. Jenny, that is complete. Copy, Woody. Ingress the airlock. NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg successfully reorganized his tethers, and he is now entering the airlock. After that hatch thermal cover is in place and the hard shell hatch has been secured, our repressurization process will occur of the crew lock. Okay. 
On the other side of the crew lock is the equipment lock. All of this is together part of the airlock. But on the other side, our NASA astronaut, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio. Just going to wait for it. Excellent. I gave it a nice kick. Good job. Okay. And the thermal hatch cover is is closed. Complete for Woody. Complete for Steve. The crew has now. Woody, attach the hook to the magnetic plate D-ring. Cinch this. The crew has now turned off their helmet cameras. This is part of the normal procedure during the repressurization process. That is snug with seven lines visible. Copy, Woody. Check the thermal cover magnet is engaged. It is engaged. All right. You can both remove your SEUs from their stowage pouches. Remove your DCM covers and Velcro to your DCM and connect to your SEUs. I might need a little more room for the hatch eventually. That's all right. I can, uh, once I get the SCU on, I'll twist away. Okay. All right, that's you installed EV2. Copy, Steve. All right, we got myself down and in. That might help a little bit, would it? One sec. All right, Jenny, EV-1 SCU installed, awesome. And yes, Steve, that's awesome, thank you. Copy all. Switch water off, forward, expect H2O is off message. EV-1 water off. The astronauts are turning the water off on their spacesuit. The hatch thermal cover is in place. Copy. We have a two-minute timer set. Caution, do not close the hatch until EMU water is off for two minutes. I want to take this opportunity to say congratulations to the entire on-orbit and ground team. You performed phenomenally today. At the end of this series, we have two deployed IROSAs, some newly certified, I would say, onboard IVs. Woody, congratulations on your second spacewalk. And Steve, congratulations on your tenth. With this spacewalk, you have tied the American spacewalking record, and we are very happy to be a part of this for both of you. Congratulations. Jenny, thanks so much. That was an amazing experience. Uh, it's amazing to be out here for Steve's uh, record tying spacewalk. And kudos to Frank, Sultan, and the whole ground team for um, all their hard work, preparation that went into this. You guys were did an awesome job.
some kind words between NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg and Jenny City Gibbons, who was the spacewalk communicator with the crew today. Okay, that gives me time. Houston Station on one for next move. <laughs> Test time. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to move King to Bravo 2, King to B2, Spartan to move. Congrats on the new array. <laughs> Getting a well played down here. Thank you both. <laughs> All right. Our two minute timer is complete, not a moment too soon. Verify that the handle is in a position per the hatch decal. Verify the outer hatch is clear of hardware and close and lock the hatch. As the hatch is closing, you heard a tradition between the flight control team here in Houston and the astronauts on board the International Space Station. There is an ongoing game of chess that is played. Every day they each make a move on that chess game. Copy. DB hatch closed and locked. Copy, hatch closed and locked on the UIA. Oxygen Although the hatch is closed and locked, the spacewalk timer will continue to run until that repressurization begins. Switch power, EV1 and 2, both to on. EV1 is on, EV2 is on, 18.6 volts. And zero amps on one, eighteen point six volts or point zero two on two. Copy all Steve. On your DCMs, switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. Once the crew lock is completely repressurized, the astronauts on the other side of the quest airlock will bring our spacewalkers from the crew lock portion into the equipment lock. They will help them doff their suits and their safers will also be removed. Copy all. With that, I will hand you back to your very capable suit IVs. The safer is the simplified aid for EVA rescue. We can discuss that further once we get to that point in the doffing process. All right, uh, we copy Jenny. Thank you so much for uh, today's work. And uh, Woody, Steve, uh, welcome back. Let's bring you in. So, uh, both of you on the DCM, let's switch auto actuator to press and verify auto actuator press. Press. Right, copy both of you are on press and then uh, Woody, uh, check EV hatch MPEV closed. EV hatch MPEV is closed. All right, next I'm going to activate the IV hatch equalization valve and uh, you just tell me uh, how comfortable is the rate. Copy. Uh, 
How is Jeffrey going? How is it for you? I'm good with it. I'm good as well, Sultan. Feels great. Our official end time for today's spacewalk is 2.17 p.m. Eastern Time, 1.17 p.m. Central Time for a total duration of 5 hours and 35 minutes. ESC, the Kulak at the floor, is fixed in the floor. Copy. You are hearing the noise of the repressurization process. Okay, we're going to hold here uh, for two minutes uh, for the uh, pressure to stabilize. The crew lock portion of the airlock is currently at about 5.1 PSI, and it we are going to hold here for it to stabilize. The crew will now perform leak checks to make sure that that portion of the airlock is stable. You are seeing Emirati Space Agency astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi on the equipment lock portion of the airlock. On the other side of that hatch are our spacewalkers. Okay, Woody and Steve, uh, 
Check switch glove heaters are both off. Glove heaters are off, you one. Off, you two. And check if you have any contaminations on those gloves and report to Houston. Negative contamination. No contamination, EV2. Okay, negative uh, contamination. So on the DCM, take call to actuator to IV. Call to actuator IV, EV2. And IV for EV1. EV1 and 2, auto traffic to IV. We'll uh, start to continue uh, the repress. Sounds great. Those leak checks were successful. You are hearing the sound of that repressurization process continuing. We are approaching 10 PSI. The goal is to reach about equal with the equipment lock and the rest of the space station, which is at around 14.7 PSI. Thirteen point one PSI. When the pressure is uh, equivalent to zero, expect and layer on. The two hundred and sixty fifth spacewalk in support of the International Space Station's assembly, maintenance, and upgrades is complete. This was the eighth spacewalk out of the International Space Station this year and the sixth for the Expedition 69 crew. Cumulatively, all spacewalks in support of the International Space Station have now totaled 1,683 hours and 27 minutes. That's equivalent to about 70 days, three hours and 27 minutes of straight spacewalking. Today's spacewalk was the second of NASA astronauts Woody Hoberg's career. He has now accumulated 11 hours and 38 minutes of spacewalking. It was the 10th spacewalk of NASA astronaut Steve Bowen's career. He has now accumulated a total of 65 hours and 57 minutes of spacewalking. 
This has put him as the third all-time aggregate of spacewalking time. Today's spacewalk. IV hydrology involved will be set to off. Just uh, confirming the uh, audio configuration here. Copy, Sultan. I'll let you know when you uh, guys go cold, Mike. The repressurization process is complete and the hatch is open. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is entering first into that equipment lock area, being greeted by his fellow Expedition 69 crewmates. On the right, you see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, and at the bottom is Emirati Space Agency astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi. Rubio and Al Nayadi will assist our spacewalkers back into this equipment lock, and then they will help them start to take off their EMUs. EMU stands for Extravehicular Activity Mobility Unit. These spacesuits have served as essentially a personal spacecraft for these spacewalkers while they were outside the space station in the vacuum of space. They have just taken off the safer unit from NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. And Station Houston, just want to let you know we have reconfigured comms. Uh, crew, EV crew is no longer hot mic. SAFER stands for Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. This is not their life support unit. That is a different backpack on the spacesuit. SAFER is essentially a life jacket for spacewalks. It has small thrusters that the astronaut could use in the unlikely event that they become untethered from the space station. And this is a live view from the mission control team here in Houston after a very successful spacewalk that ended ahead of schedule and with numerous additional tasks completed. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen is safely secured to the side of the equipment lock. He is waiting on now his crewmate, NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, to be retrieved from the crew lock. He is being pulled now into the equipment lock. Both the equipment lock and the crew lock are a part of the airlock. They are in the quest airlock. The other airlock on board the International Space Station is called the Poisk airlock.
that safer unit is being removed from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio making sure that Woody Hoburg is secure on that equipment lock wall.